Good evening, and we are live. How you doing? I haven't seen you since last year. Welcome back to Conversations. I'm Professor Reggie Miles, and we're about to do what we need to do on this show today. There's a whole lot of stuff that's going on, but I'm telling you, I've had a great time. So if I went to start talking about what's going on, the first thing I was I'm think been thinking about is um the state of stepping. And all I could tell you is that it's in great shape. It's in great shape. Stepping is moving forward, and we're doing a lot of great things across the country. And I'm very proud to be at this time in this time with stepping. So conversation season three, we're going to kick it off doing something like we're talking to the DJs. We're talking to the promoters. We're stepping, definitely going to talk about to the boppers and steppers and walkers. And we just are really thankful for you. As you can see, I got a new background. There's so many things that are coming on and I've got some great guests lined up for you on conversations. Now I'm going to be changing like uh my stream yard format and stuff. I didn't get into my stream ele elements. I'm gonna do this while the guys are talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. I'm going to be changing things while the guys are talking. So y'all just bear with me and welcome back. Happy New Year. This is now season three. We are now involved with season three of Conversations. Happy New Year. We're back. Conversations is on. I'm Professor Reggie Miles and glad that you can join me here tonight for this very, very, very special, insightful night with conversations. My guest is the one and only DJ Mellow Chris. How are you, sir? All right. All right. How's it going, Reggie? Good, good. We got you in here. We got the sound going. And so, listen, there's going to be some elements coming up on the, um, both on the Twitch, on the Twitch feed, and probably in Facebook as well. There's going to be some words coming up from my gospel show. Don't even worry about that. I'm going to change that as we talk. But mm -hmm. tonight is a very special night because we're going to kick off the new year, 2023, talking to, talking to the guys and the gals that make this and do what it do, okay? And there's no set. There's no set, and there's no uh, there's no party without the DJ. And we're talking to one of the DJs that like really kicked it off and changed the game. My guest, DJ Mellow Chris. Let's go. All right, my man. How's everybody doing? I uh, glad to get part of this uh, conversation. And uh, we, uh, Reggie's going to ask me some questions. This is how this is going to go. Uh, he wants to start from the big from now, and I'd rather start from the beginning. But I'm going to let him go on and get us kick us off. Oh well, now and let's let's take see it. Where we at. Go ahead, let's Reggie. take let's take it from the beginning. Then let's take it let's let's take it from the beginning. A as a matter of fact, that might be. That might be the best choice. So, you know, my guess is always right. I'm gonna stand back and get out the way, you know, because I'm ah. just I'm just a facilitator, cause this is your story. So let's do let's do what we do tonight. So, Mella Chris, I might as well just go ahead on and ask you uh what I've asked everybody else that's come on the program. What were you doing before the world's largest stepping contest? Uh. DJing, playing music. 
I uh, started playing music probably, uh, some DJs had pictures of them playing records when they was real small. I was in Houston when I first started messing around with music. And um, if you can ever remember the old stereos back in the day, they were real long, had the TV on one side, and you had to open up the drawer, pull out the little record player on the side of it. That's what we had back in the day, back in Houston in the 60s. Um, I was born in Chicago, but uh, music became part of me probably down there. I got to playing a lot of music. Messing with just just a a person trying to, uh, I guess a kid, experimenting with something at a very young age and something I got to took a liking to it. So from that moment on, I, uh, I'm not going to keep y'all in that little spot, but that's when I first started playing with records, 45s and stuff like that. And, um, I, uh, got to Chicago and started playing records. Uh, I worked at a record shop when do it while I was in high school. I worked on 47th and Fordsville for many years. A lot of people know me from down there. And uh, from that moment on, I uh, got into clubs. I was playing at the club called Brady's, which was with, with um, 47th and Fordsville. I was 15 years old. Now, the reason why I was able to get in this club is because I was real hairy. I had a beard and a mustache. I had the pork chops. <laughs> and I was shaving when I was 15 years old, so people didn't know how old I was. And next door to the record shop was another club called Weeks. It was called 518. I also DJed in there. But, you know, like I said, I sat at the bar, and by me being a hairy guy in the face, they never knew how old I was. They just knew I was Johnny Kidd's son. That's how I was known as. So anyway, the record shop is where I really laid down the foundation on how uh, I learned a lot about music, record labels, well, where we, uh, distributors where we used to pick up the music, ran into a lot of DJs. And from that moment on, uh, after that, I started doing independent clubs. We're clubs, I say, uh, bars outside of that facility. So I went to a place called the, um, let me see. Oh, uh, what was that? The launching Pad. That was one of them. Bob's Place, 40, uh, 75th Street right off of Cottage Grove. The launching pad was 75th right off of Stony Island. And Willa Mays place, that's where I met Keith Hubbard. Uh, and that was in the early 80s. Um, but my first gig, I was a South Mountain High School and I was with some friends and um, their birthdays was in December also. So we got together in 74 and we did, that's when I first put down my turntables, you know, all the beginning DJs had to start with this kind of setup. We had just two regular turntables and we had the full knob, uh, 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 nine volt battery mixer. So when you put the record on the needle on the record, you had to rush to it and turn these two knobs. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, <laughs> Mello. Don't tell me you started off with the radio shack. Yeah, mix. That's what I oh, no. Nine volt battery. Don't and, tell me. Uh, you're ready to go off. We put the needle on the other one and turn those knobs up. And sometimes you can catch a blend, and sometimes you don't. You have to hurry up and cut the other one down before it changes records on you. So anyway, that's what that's we did in 74. 73 and 74, that was the thing. So we had the 9-volt battery mixes. So um, after so many years of playing in the clubs, uh, Keith Hubbard had introduced me. He said, man, why don't you come to the step sets? And... Um, I didn't know he knew this guy named Jam and Don. Jam and Don was at the place called Lills, 80th and Cottage Grove. So I went in there and I was doing something and talking to Jam and Don because I, you know, we just, by me being a DJ and into music and I saw how this guy was playing, it made me strike up a conversation with him. His name is Jam and Don. Wound up, we struck off and we had, became a friendship. And he said, well, you play so much, so you've been playing business for years. Why don't you sit in for me one day? So I wound up sitting in for him one day. And he sat at the bar while I played some music. So everybody enjoyed the music I was playing. And he had a birthday coming up. It was February 6th of, I mean, 92. And when he had that birthday party, he asked me what I played. And, you know, by me not. Uh, he had all the records and all the music, so I just used his equipment and his music that he had lined up, you know. So anyway, that's how that went, and I met Lil. She's the owner. That's why it's called Lil's. I met Lil 
And after me playing her, hearing me two or three times, she said, you so mellow. Why don't you call yourself Mellow Chris? That's how I got the name, through Leo. And see, Leo said, well, Chris, this is what you do. Since you want to be just a regular Chris, spell it with a, a K, K-H-R-I-S, instead of C-H-R-I-S. So that's how Mellow Chris, that's how I got my name, through Leo. And she'll tell you that right now. I'm the one who gave you your name. I said, yes, you did, Leo. So anyway, I met a lot of people, Ben Cheeks, um, throughout Lil's. Um, he was one of the guys that, uh, old timers that came through there. He was worked for Motown. He used to come in there and sling me and Dam and Don album CDs and stuff because he worked for Motown. So he would get a lot of promotional stuff. He'd come in there and send it to us. Anyway, he was a real good guy. And um, Jam and Don, uh, Jam and Don, also worked at the other place, 75th and King Drive. So on Thursday nights, he was the second DJ behind Herb Kent. Herb Kent had an awesome Thursday nights event set there every Thursday. It was after work set. He would play till about, I think, 1 o'clock. And Jam and Don would take over from 1 to 4. Well, I watched that for a little while, and it was real good. Excellent. I mean, a lot of the old timers that were out during the day. Some people are still around, but we lost a lot of those main steppers. Them steppers was, I mean, them people was, it was a class. They were classy. And it was a full adult set. So anyway, I well, I played that. I mean, I watched that for a while. Jam and Don had to go out of town. He said, Chris, why don't you do me a favor? I'm going to leave, give you the key to the, to the back so you can get all the stuff out. Why don't you play behind her while I go out of town? And that's when I met Maceo, the owner at the other place. Messed around, finally got a job in there. You know what I mean? And that's how I got on the stepping set. But the person that introduced me to uh, the stepping part of the world, I think, that brought me to the set that mentioned it to me about the stepping sets was Keith Hubbard. And that was like in 92, I mean, excuse me, 82, 83 maybe, before my baby yeah. son was born. Yeah, so that's how... I, He's one of the first people I met, um, besides Andrea. Andrea, I think it might have been Keith Hubbard, first person on the set I met. Yeah, it was. So you got a you got a strong musicology coming from the fact that you worked in a record shop. Oh yeah, we had everything. I mean, we had Keith Barrow on the album. Mm -hmm. We had uh, Voices of East Harlem. We had the album. Mm -hmm. Okay. Giving love. Eighty Fisher. Third cup. Third cup. We had the album. So yeah, I yeah. Stuff. Didn't even really now know how good and how important these records was gonna be. I mm -hmm. let a lot of them slip out my hand, so I didn't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, just, I sold the last copies. You know what I'm saying? So we got rid of the last copies. And I said, "Man, I should stash one of these." You see what I'm saying? So <laughs> now you know, but you you know you never know that that was gonna be collectible type music. You still got one of these. Right, right. right. No, I don't have one of those stylists. Yeah, remember that stylist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know if you can buy, find them anymore. Listen. Yeah, so that's how I became, uh, got on the stepper set. I got it through Jam and Don. And um, through the other place, I met people like Butterball, Charlie Green, Big Luke, um, uh, DJ Otto. The rest of God rest his soul. He's a he was another uh, just like Butterball, another awesome guy there from back in the day. Um, I met Larry Joe, mm. and this is the same year or the next year. I can't keep up my time on the, the, the day together, but Larry Joe introduced himself to me, and he came up there. And the set was good. I wound up playing more than just that Thursday night behind her because Jam and Don had quit. After a mm. while, he said, man, I'm going to let that go. Why don't you just take it? Just like that. So when I agreed to go on and take it, and I was behind her every Thursday night, then that's when I met a lot of the locals, like Cheryl Jackson and Rose Wellington. And, you know, I just met, started meeting everybody. Right. Uh, 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 Deb Jeff, Debonair Jeff, we used to call him. I, yes. You know, people like that. And uh, I got to meet a, a whole lot of folks like that. Um so after a while, uh, I wound up. The set what I I met Maceo. Maceo gave me a job, and then I met and ran into Larry Joe. Now the first step of set I ever went to was Rose Wellington. Mm -hmm. 
He said, Chris, why don't you go to the step and said, you ain't working this Saturday. I said, no, nah. I was here, you know, I was just doing Thursdays. And he said, well, come on the, um, and let's go about this uh, road set. It says, hey, Mr. G's. And that's the first time I ever went to a step and said, hey, don't worry about no money. We ain't got to pay. DJs don't pay. Mm-hmm. That's how I first went to road set. And that was, uh, that was the first year she started. I hadn't met Steve and them yet. Wow. No, I hadn't met Steve. I hadn't met Vincent. The first DJ I met at a record store. Uh, probably was a record store was Cornell Forge. He passed mm-hmm. away last year, maybe about eight, seven, eight months ago. He passed away. Um, I met him in a record store. I met Steve Breeze at a record store. I met him at Rock Records downtown in Washington. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh-huh. And I used to go to Out of the Past a lot. So I'm down, I can't remember how many people I met up in there digging for old records. Wow, yeah, because yeah, we were hunters back then. Right. Uh, we were hunters. <laughs> like, like we were hunters. See, back in the nine today, you know, they they passing around hard drives like it ain't nothing. <laughs> back, in the, back then, uh, we wore overalls and blue jeans and got on our knees in these old record shops and secondhand tune, Doctor Wax, out of the past, wherever we could. We knew they had a lot of wax. We was in there on the floor. Beverly we Records running through. Get me kept up through there. We were filthy. <laughs> we like, oh my god. You know, what I mean, yeah. dust, garbage, and whatever else is up on them between them records. Mm-hmm. But that's what we did because we wanted we were searching for music to play, music to play. That's how DJs are. They hunt. They hunters. Real DJs are hunters. If you never did this, how you know these guys got it easy today? You know, because <laughs> they got flash drives and hard drives. <laughs> you don't know how good it is, how difficult it was for us to get those libraries together that y'all got y'all hands on. Mm-hmm. They got hands on a lot of our stuff that we worked for real hard to gather up. You know what I mean? But anyway, um, that's how I started on the Stepper set. And then I wound up getting gigs outside of the other place. I remember mean, this guy needs coming in. I mean, we called him by the name of Easy. I think his real name was Donald. Everybody yeah, called him Easy. And he um, said, Man, I'm going to start a set. I'm going to know if you would DJ for me. And it was down now, 79th. And. Um, South Shore Drive. It was called okay. uh, End of the Rainbow. And um, it was going to be a Thursday night set. I said, well, you know, I'm in here. Not Thursday night. What night was that? Anyway, I forgot. You know, I thought it was a Thursday night. Well, the Thursday or Tuesday? No, uh, you know, I came to that Thursday because of Herb. When we was all doing Herb set there. I can't think exactly what night it was. Might have been that Tuesday or that Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, End of the Rainbow was hot on Tuesday night, too. Yeah, I can't even think. I think it was, I don't know, I don't know how it really went. Because yeah, I, I can't remember when Mr. Bernard moved. Huh? I can't remember when Mr. Bernard moved from the End of the Rainbow to Nico's, but that was, that was, he Did had Nico's that. first, or was he at the End of the Rainbow? Or were they both he, was at the the end, he was at the End of the Rainbow first. Oh, okay, so, yeah. Right. So anyway, that's well. That, that's well. Where I wound up down there with Jan, uh, Don, and the name of that group was called the No Men from the Low End. Mm-hmm. And and that's when I saw uh, Claudel and them was coming down there. Yeah, they wanted to check out this new set, and easy to told put the word out there. Come on down, check out the set I'm gonna be doing on this night. So uh, we had a lot of people come down there. I think Raymond, Ray, Ice Ray, and them came down for a little bit, and. Uh, I'd already met Claudel in and out, but I didn't really know Claudel, but I, I, you know, we spoke at the other place. So when I met Claudel up in there, I was like, um, he said, man, why don't you come down there and check us out? We had a high step was down at Sarah J's. So uh, I kind of messed around with a conversation with him back and forth. Then something happened down at Nico's and I just had to get out of there. <laughs> I didn't like the atmosphere no more. Just something that was kind of shady about the, 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 you know, what was going on in there. So I, something made me leave. So I left there and I just stayed down at the other place. And then I went down there. Cla- Claudel came in there and asked me, would I come down there and just check out the Wednesday night set? And that's what I did on one of the days I was off. And that's how I met Ice Ray, Mac Zach, Black Rob, Ice Mike. Who else? Um, Donnie Davis. Donnie Davis and Leanna. And- George Macaroni. Oh, yeah, man, that was my guy right there, George Macaroni and Joyce. That was the hot that and Toy. Remember Toy? Simon mm-hmm. Yes. That was, that was the hot steps. I was trying, I'm trying to get her to come back 
to, to do an interview, so I'm still working on her. Let me say hello to uh, Don Vic and to uh, DJ Too Cute. How you doing? Glad you stopped in. Also, Pastor D on the West Coast, we want to say hello to you and anybody else that's listening. K Katrina, how you doing? Y'all like, share, and pass the word. Tell them that Conversations is back on and we are doing what we need to do. We're continuing with this oral history project and we've just got Mellow Chris to tell us his beginnings. And so now we're in it. So now it's time for me to like <laughs> right, 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 right. Rub, rub my hands together and let's go into some to some real, 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 real good stuff. One of the things one of the things that um uh, I've been, you know, in my research that I've come across is the fact that you are one of the first to go outside of Chicago to spin a set. But wait a minute now, before I get into that, let's talk about, let's talk about your relationship with Steve Breeze. Cause that's when I, I, you know, you, you and Breeze was like all over everywhere, you know, as I was exiting going out and, you know, just for those folk who don't know, just for a few minutes, since you had a real close time with him, Let's talk about Steve Breeze. Tell us about, you know, the greatness of that brother on the turntables and what you all accomplished, you know, in the times that you were together. Well, Steve was a certain kind of man. He was a certain kind of guy. They, um, he knew a lot about music, um, stuff that I wouldn't, would, would never thought of playing. Mm -hmm. He would drop. He's made a lot of records that you wouldn't think would they, people would dance to, would step to. He broke a lot of music out there. And uh, he was a real good hunter. He's the first person that started buying um, imported records. So before Shazam came out, Steve came out with a lot of imported records and would lay them down. And he would tell people who they were and everything until um, certain people start grabbing them and putting them on. He wanted to be able to play these songs for a little while because he spent a lot of money on them. Mm -hmm. And he would go online to these different websites and buy imported CDs and have them delivered to his house. Then he would play them. You know, sometimes he could scan a few of them on, online because, you know, he was just a person that would, could go out and hunt for music. And he laid a lot of music out for us. Felipe, that was come from Steve Breeze. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, stay and my sugar by Atlantic Star. All those was on imported, import CDs. He even came out with the Kenny Burke CDs. Uh, I'm talking about indigenous love and nothing but love and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, all that came from Steve Breeze. Um, as far as instrumentals, you know, he he was just able to snoop out a lot of records that. And uh, he brought a lot of stuff to my attention. When I met him, I met him in a record shop. Like I say, he was buying something, and I forgot what it was. And he turned around and looked and he said, hey, I said, hey, what's up? And that's how we kind of bumped heads again behind the, the time in Nico's uh, and the Rainbow. But uh, we, um, um, he was an awesome guy. He knew a lot about uh, how to bring a party, how to start a party. That's one mm -hmm. thing you got to learn. A lot of DJs don't know how to start a party. They come in right away and they just throw a fire all over the turntable, all over the floor, <laughs> dance floor, and ain't nobody there. Or you're going to have to replay these songs again, so you got to know how to start a party. Steve was <laughs> able to lay the stuff down, and if you listen to him and watch him, you will see how he will lay his whole program down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and the type of smoothness he had. I mean, uh, as, as well as being a smart guy, a uh, respectable guy and uh, he know how to handle a crowd and I just listened to him and got up under him and the type of record that he was bringing to my attention I already knew a ton of them but except for the imported stuff uh, I grabbed a lot of stuff from him you know what I mean and uh, we became really good friends me and Steve did we did a lot together I went over his house before I knew anything I was in his house and went in his basement he was showing me all kind of stuff and 
music. He had CDs all over, albums all over the place. Steve was in there. I didn't know he had been collecting, you know, like me. I had a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of stuff I got rid of. A lot of stuff got waterlogged in basements. You know what I mean? You know, mm-hmm. people let their stuff flood and they ruin a lot of good music and equipment. So that happened to me a couple of times. But he had so much music. Steve was a real sweethearted, down to earth person. But uh, uh, I think he could sniff out bad action or bad vibes and he just didn't mess with everybody. You know what I mean? And let too many people get close to him. But uh, Vincent Mandel and Steve, um, they had already started a set called New Jocks. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they had already known each other. And uh, I was introduced to Vincent uh, through Steve. I believe they was down at the uh, uh, Holiday Inn City Center down in Ohio. And we used to go down there. They was called the New Jocks along with Kenny B. Thompson from D103. And, but anyway, Steve, uh, very knowledgeable, very, him and Arlene built, I think Deja Vu came out in 92 or 93, Mm -hmm. when they first built Deja Vu. And behind somebody like Arlene, who was just a non-stoppable, you couldn't stop Arlene. And she was so friendly and she knew a lot of people on the set. And she would just take tickets and throw them in your hand and make you buy the tickets. You know what I mean? Wow. They who wound up being hot because it wasn't that many big sets. Rose had a ball of ball party. She was, I think she went from one room to both sides of Mr. G's. And it was just nonstop for years. Rose Wellington had it going on. But mm-hmm. other than that, behind that, Good Time Productions and Days of Fool, I think those were the biggest sets going on. Everything else was in clubs. Okay. I think I think those were the real big sets that everybody really uh, got into. Um, that I that I can really really say that had a real amount of people, like three four hundred people a piece. You see what I'm saying? So I think that's how it really happened. Um, when I that, that I can recollect. Mm-hmm. And, um, like I say, I watched Steve for a while until I was asked to actually play with him. And then I uh, actually, uh, we were, I can't just tell you when, but I played for Deja Vu early. Mm -hmm. I played, uh, later on down the line, I played for Rose. But when I first went to Rose set, it was Woody Magneto. Mm -hmm. And then then piggybacked and turned into Sam Chapman, back to Woody. They piggybacked for a little bit. I think then it wound up being all Sam. And you know what I mean? But that's a whole nother story. But that was a that was that set was number one. So when she said she got the number one four set, it said, no doubt about it, hands down. The girl was killing it. That was a real good set uh, for adults. Now no kids, well no kids. When the sets wasn't divided then. That's the thing about the sets now and the sets back then. Okay, Everybody now you talk it. about that. Talk about talk Everybody about this division. The set. It wasn't mm-hmm. no. This set, that set, new school set, old school set. It was the set. Mm-hmm. And everybody congregated at the set. They danced with each other, new, young, old. Everybody danced together, and it was just a ball. We never had no fights. We wasn't no jealousy, chairs breaking. We didn't have that kind of stuff till later on down the line. I think some of that animosity and some of them, uh, the tension flared up during those contests, preliminaries. When mm-hmm. people weren't making it to the finals, they start crying and <laughs> acting stupid. And, you know, I think that's when the first time I ever saw some tension or some rowdiness, at a, you know, when somebody just was walking around cussing, you know what I mean? But uh, it was actually um, bad vibes start entering the step sets around the contest times, you know. But other mm-hmm. than that, everything was good. Everything was good. Um, after uh, a while, uh, Steve uh, inter- let me play with the um, with Deja Vu and Arlene and all of them. They all agreed. So I, I played for Deja Vu. Then I wound up playing for Visions, which was Cheryl Jackson, Arlene, and uh, Dimple. It was mm-hmm. called Visions. They was at the uh, Dalton Expo Center uh, upstairs. Wow. Because they had a downstairs. The old there. Nimbus. There you go. <laughs> the old Nimbus? Uh, I, I think, yeah, no, was that on? Uh, that was the Dorchester. Okay, good, 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 right, good. Right. The members were yeah, the Dorchester. Good, good. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. So um, that's how that that situation went. Um, if we back to Steve, I can't tell you to, nothing bad about Steve, man. We mm-hmm. just had a good friendship. We wound up making that seven a set together, and we called it Mellow Breeze. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did pretty good. We were over at St. Joseph, not St. Joseph, St. Margaret's, 99th and Troop. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we had a good run until, you know, the neighborhood started seeing all these cars and started busting windows. And a few people got their windows busted. Oh, they come to the set no more. So we had to find some, some way to get some security there to lure the people back. We wound up giving up and getting out of St. Margaret's. But St. Margaret's is where me and Steve, he started, wanted to start the set. I was pretty interested in it. I was new on the set and I was getting some notar no you know getting notarized a lot you know by different people and um that's that's about how I can say about Steve man it hurt me to this day to talk about Steve too much because mm-hmm. I watched him go struggle through the uh ALS the new Lou mm-hmm. Gehrig's disease which which took his life you know mm-hmm. and uh, uh for as a friend wise, you couldn't ask for no much better. No okay. uh, no better person. He was okay. just a person you would love to be. A lot of people liked him. Love Steve. You know, Let he got check. a lot of feedback because they say he played too old, he played too slow. I mean, you ain't gonna, you gonna satisfy no everybody on the set. It Let, just ain't gonna let, happen that way. You know, enjoy the set. If you don't like that type of record, go sit down, but enjoy the party. You know, but, um, you know, they say that about me. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm never playing this guy. Oh, he's playing too fast. Oh, he's playing the place on world record. You know, you're just going to get that, you know what I'm saying? Your time will be off sometime. We're human. Let me tell you something. Uh, Bra- Breeze, um, and, and just before he um, made his transition, and let me just, first of all, acknowledge People from the East Coast, what's going on, founders and DJ Bev? How you all doing? Everybody on Twitch, let me say hello to you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, also, folk on Facebook, how you doing? Send those hearts up. Like and share because we've got so much more to go. We're going to be doing some talking here because we haven't, we really, we're just, just going around it now, but we're going to do some things. But going back to Breeze, uh, Breeze, he would he was telling me giving me some insight on the history and uh i didn't know that he was that deep with the history of the dance but he was truly deep uh because when i first came out 5 years ago and man did you did you send that you did you send me that picture when we got the we oh, no, had just no. Yeah, I forgot to see you. You forgot it, huh? All right, that's okay. We just so happened that Step Aganza, which is one of our, well, Step of Union is one of our sponsors now. Uh, we happened to be awarded that same year, five years ago, uh, in 2018. And so that that was a great thing. And uh Breeze began to start telling me some things, especially about how the dance made the transition because I had totally forgot about the new bop. I've totally forgot about it. And then when Breeze, he just, he said a couple of lines. I said, I put my hand on my head. I said, oh my God, that was it. And then it was another guy that helped to, you know, bring that to my remembrance, Dan Land. Mm -hmm. Video man, Dan, he, he did. He said some things to me as well and it clicked. And I was able to articulate and explain how bopping went into stepping. And people forget about this one little section in between called the new bop. And the new boppers were the ones that took the dance from one hand because the boppers did the dance with one hand. And the new boppers started doing it with two hands. And those were the younger high school kids that were in and people from the streets as well, uh, like Taboo, uh, and then Kim Boy, he was in high school, uh, Macaroni, they started doing that, and that's when they started doing those two hand things and, and that shuffle. And, the man on man, <laughs> yeah, well, to, to kick that thing off. But Breeze would tell me these things, and then, like, when the dance with, with, with three G's, and we'll talk about that, but when the dance went to and was in the three G's and the new schools start coming out. You know, he told me, he said that he had wished 
He said he had wished that I was there at that time. Let me see if he said. He said, oh, he, let me see. I'm going to try to read this right now. Uh, he wrote and he said to me, let's see. That said was... Uh, He said uh, he was talking about a set that was very success successful and that style of dance, the new school was, it had spread throughout the city and the nation among the new steppers coinciding with the release of R. Kelly's step in the name of love. He, this is what he said. I really wish you were DJing at that time to experience this. What was that experience like, uh, Melochris, to see the traditional dance go into this new school? Yeah, the new school, well, the music of what drew the younger people. Mm -hmm. When I left, um, when I got a, a, went for another club besides the other place, I wound up asking to do a Tuesday night with Marjorie and Durham, and it was called Tighten Up Tuesday. I didn't mm -hmm. know what to look for or what to expect. I just go in there and play some stepping music, but I found up when I got in there, I found out all these young people. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I had to, yeah, you know, anybody a spot there, a spot here, but you know, you couldn't just, they want you to pick it up. And I found I got better floors once I tried to mid temple the crowd and pick them up a little bit. You know what I mean? They very seldom walked, you know, um, they did, but not real hard. But uh, you had to, um, Keep current. That's what a trap. Whatever they were playing out on the radio, if you could slow it down and, and, and play it and put some extensions on the song, and it, they would, it would be called a young person stepping song. And uh, so that's what it started drawing. 3G started drawing young people, and they wound up being when Shorty Ed and uh, mm. James and Demita and and the and you know what I mean and um oh, I forgot to show the other lady's name oh my god anyway when uh, uh when we talking about Cleo but tell was somebody else um, but when when the new when the freestyle start fading out it looked like uh they had to take it off the, the roster when it come down to the world's largest couldn't be no mm -hmm. freestyle we have a two three couples so they took freestyle off they said we want to change that and Pete Fraser thought of the, and the genius idea of making it a new school category because mm -hmm. we didn't have freestyles no more. Freestyle was playing out. It was very, very exciting to see freestyle dancing. If you, people don't really, original freestyle dancing, these, these people right here have never really seen freestyle dancing like it was back in the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what was my guy that wore the diaper? Oh, uh, yeah, Casper. I mean, not Casper, uh, Weasel. Weasel! Oh, Weasel. my God. When people saw stuff like that, oh, my God. Shorty Ed, they were clowns. But My, and then when Michael Manning, when Casper and them was jumping, Cleo was jumping on people's backs, and sometimes uh, James would jump on Cleo back. I mean, and they would still be on beat, and uh, he'll jump off and then do a split. And, oh my God, freestyle was a bomb. But when freestyle was playing off, he made uh, Pete Fraser made an ingenious idea of turning that into a new school category. Now mm -hmm. we having so many youngsters in there, man. Three G's had a parking lot across the street. They mm -hmm. had a big restaurant called Bozo's on the south side of the building, east side, north side of the building. And it had a circle around parking lot on the pro on, on this the actual grounds of 3G's. It was a circle of a number of parking spaces. So the place was wall to wall packed every two, became wall to wall packed every two. And 90% of the crowd in there were the young people. So you had to stay current with them and you had to put a little mixture with the music and that's where the mix really came in at. Mostly it came in from that, that crowd right there. Mm. And that's what new school formed that right there at three G's with my jet and Durham. Wow. Wow. That was a new, that's the first new school place. Who was, who was one of your early, uh, who was one of your other early influences uh, as a DJ? Uh, when I listen to, I think the older people, the older guys, as was the as the main people that I really, Herb Kemp was just monster to me. He uh, he was a dusty man, but when it came down to, he was really he had so much knowledge about songs that I never knew 
uh, uh, the history of some of the artists, like uh, the emotions, and uh, he knew all of Dale's personally. He would tell you about uh, uh, Color Me Father, you know, just stuff that you would never and knew any background of certain people, Fontella Bass, and you know, he had did interviews and met of uh, uh, Barbara Ackland. He knew a lot of things about people, and that's what I really loved about Herb Kent. He had so much knowledge, and but and I was kind of like, dang, I wish I'd have got a chance to meet some of these people. I never thought in my day that I would be actually on stage with people like the stylistics. I mean, you know what I mean? And I was just stunned to be around people like that. You know what I mean? Artists that I, I grew, like the Blue Magic. I never thought mm. I'd be on the stage with Blue Magic. I was wow. crazy about Blue Magic. Chasing Rainbows, oh my God, that was some time. Ted so anyway, the Wizard Mills. Huh? Ted the Wizard Mills. Oh yeah, yeah, Ted. Yeah. You know, we just lost one of the members too. Uh, yeah. Another member, yeah, from Blue Magic passed away. Uh, you know what I mean? But um, uh, transitioning from regular school, I'm going to tell you something funny about that too. I left places like The Taste and uh, I kind of faded out of Mr. Ricky's and all these other little bar places I was DJing at. And I left all that alone and went down to the three G's. I got stuck in that new school. You know, when I came back, I was messed up. What? <laughs> oh, I came back. I was messed up. I played for a set that was that I think the Belvedere, and I was actually absolutely, absolutely terrible. I mm. had to get off the box real fast. Wow. Because I've been playing for them kids that long. I thought mm. my yeah, this, that, 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 that I was gonna drop some of that stuff for these older steppers. Oh my God, was I wrong? Well, Miller Chris, let me introduce you to who I just interjected into this program. The gentleman right down there below me is Mr. Andre Scorpio Mitchell. Hey, my man, my man. Scorpio meet Miller Chris. Miller What's Chris right? meet Scorpio. Right. Yeah. Uh, we know each other. What's up, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I oh. you know what I think of when I first met you? We were down there on 71st in Michigan. And I used to come down there and listen to you play. Oh, okay. Right. He goes. Uh, right, okay. man, that's where it was. That's where he was. He was right off the side in that little room, right. like that. Man. Yeah. That was it. That's oh, okay. the first time. Yeah, my man. Nice, nice seeing you again. Um, uh, and then you, um, I know you, you kind of disappeared, and then you came back, and you was at Alexander's, right? What's the name of the place? No, uh, no Michigan, and what was the name of that place you was down there? I was at um, Chic Ricks. Yeah. Uh, one uh, off of uh, one off uh, of Twelfth Street. Uh, uh, you're talking about um, um, um when, you, when you came back. What was the name of that place? Alphonse. Alphonse. I said like yeah. Alexander. Yeah, Alphonse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the that's the last time I really heard yeah. you on, on the box yeah. again. Uh, yeah, doing your yeah. thing. Because I was there Fridays and Saturdays. Yeah, Fridays. You was on Fridays with Saturdays, okay. Yes, uh, Fridays was Stepping Music and Saturdays was a mixture. Okay, got you. Yeah. Got you. Mostly dance music on Saturdays. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay, Damn. these these two gentlemen, uh, these two gentlemen, mm -hmm. I have great respect for. These two gentlemen on the box, uh, for not only for their skills, but you know, just for the relationships they've been having with me. Uh, Andre, you know, near and dear to me because uh, as I exited, he entered. <laughs> yeah. as, I was, as I was going, he was coming in, and that was that was my partner in crime when we played together. Yeah, you know, from Chick Ricks and the four of us, the connection set we did, we did a bunch of sets together. You yeah. know, and we didn't have the equipment. We didn't have the equipment to, well, I did have it, but yeah. I wasn't trying to, you know, trying to set it up and, you know, I wasn't doing, I was getting, I was, I was actually getting tired of it, <laughs> you know, in the nineties, in the nineties, I was actually getting tired of it and then going through stuff. And I ended up going to church and guess who was in church too? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 
<laughs> we was in the same, we was in the same place, you know, yeah. doing the same. And I remember when both of us, me and both me and Andre, we were we were Bible toting DJs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Carrying yeah. the Bible 24-7. Mm -hmm. But Mello, now getting back to you, uh, let's get mm -hmm. into the fact that you are the you are the godfather, so to speak, of DJs going from out of Chicago, going into other cities, uh, spinning. Tell us mm -hmm. about that experience, your first, your first jaunt. And I think you were, uh, you went down to Atlanta or what was, where did you go? Right. It was Atlanta. I've got a call from Cheryl Pope. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we had, uh, uh, I think, uh, let me see, I can't tell you if, the name of the group was called Taking It Step by Step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, she heard me play in Chicago. And then she actually had moved from Chicago to Atlanta. And uh, she was working. And, uh, you know, she went down there. And she had a job down there. But she wanted, they was down there trying to bring Stepping to Atlanta. That was the first, to me, that was the first signs of Stepping going to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not saying they were the only ones, but they really put a groove and they foot down in Atlanta at, at for Chicago style stepping. So Cheryl called asked me and said, would you uh, mind, what would you think about coming down here and playing for our group, taking it step by step? And I think that was in 02, 03. And I think that was the first time mm -hmm. and someone asked to, uh, they flew a, a DJ out to come that way. Yeah. Yeah. To, uh, yeah. To get in the air and pay for your flight play for your hotel and actually and give you a, a fee and that mm. was the first time for a step of the dj that was the first time wow wow right. man and them, them them floodgates for that is it's they open real wide it's like everybody going out of town right, right. chicago djs are going everywhere, everywhere uh right. Mm -hmm. uh, Val saying Scorp Scorpio Val remembers you at the East of the Rhine and yep. Mellow uh, Jeffrey Shine says that you were his DJ you and Steve Breeze right right Mellow Breeze we yeah Mellow Breeze. yeah Right, right, right. That was they, that was the club set. All right, and I remember too, right when uh that was going on. I was coming in. I, I think I was at Howard then, you know. And I was Jeffrey Shine. Jeffrey Shine just he just I mean he he had you on top of the mountain. He said, "Oh wow, you know, Mellow and Breeze." That's I I said, "Well, well Jeff, can I come out?" He said, "Man, ain't no need of you coming out." <laughs> 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 and, and when when Jeff put me down, I knew it was over for me. <laughs> Cause Jeff Jeff had known me since the post office, right? I mean, we were well, we were always together, but no, but was welcome to come out on that set. I was saying I was new myself mm -hmm. to the main set. So when the uh, other DJs was coming aboard, and I mean, when they was gonna be on the ticket, man, I played with Kenny B. Thompson. I can't tell you how many times. Enjoyed the man, you know. That's I liked it of meeting people and playing at different clubs and you know playing with other DJs. I had no problem with it. It was no no biggie. I wasn't I wasn't in charge. I wasn't paying the bills. So. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, Kenny, you know, man, we had a Kenny, back in the Kenny day. was a Kenny was a great dude to work with. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, he was. Cause, yeah, he was uh, Cause Kenny, Kenny, Kenny would pull a rabbit out of his hat on you, and he'd have you know he'd be sending you to school. Cause just trying to keep up with him, you know, mm -hmm. you know, cause I don't, Kenny, Kenny had a, an, an uncanny way of, uh, of keeping a flow regardless of what he played. Mm -hmm. You know, this, I mean, this cat could go from walking back into a mid tempo cut and then, you know, giving you some up tempo and Kenny always played dub versions of songs. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh. yeah, yeah. he was kind of like, um, yeah, he looked like he was, more of a type, I mean, he played classics, but uh, he would try to give you something that's not so familiar and burn up on a, on the stepper set that we'd like, you know. Absolutely. Different. He always I, tried to introduce something different when he did his show on, uh, 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 you know, on the radio every yeah. Saturday night. I mean, he, yeah. he couldn't wait to hear what he was going to play different than he was that type of person. Mm. Yeah. B was, B was something else. He was something else. So yeah, that was, be, that, yeah. That, was, that was my man there, yeah. yeah. Between him and Steve, music came out 
uh, differently, and we got to let know we was introducing it at the same time to the steppers, and it wound up being good. You know, it mm-hmm. caught on. The records caught on. Other DJs started finding out who the songs were. They started playing them, and that's how our records were being broke on the stepper set. Listen now, talk about the now. I know back in the day, you know, we back in the day we had a I, I don't know, it's like a different camaraderie that I'm I'm seeing out here. And I know when I first I was like in for a culture shock uh when when I first came on the scene and one of the DJs was playing a song and I I I I didn't have, I wasn't familiar with it and I went and asked the DJ <laughs> next thing, you know, he was handing me a CD. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, he, was okay. He, was, he was handing me a CD, you know, and you guys, oh man, dude, I ain't buying no CD. <laughs> oh, you know, so I just, I went on, and, you know, walked away. I didn't even try to shazam it or nothing. I had, I, I had got so, you know, I, uh, I ain't doing that. I just left it, left it alone. Hey, when I was at man, I'm, I'm, how many years ago was that? Cause Shazam, that, that was that was 2018. When I oh, 2018, yeah, I 2017, when I came out, you know, when okay. I came back out, cause you know I had been gone. I had been yeah. gone from like 90, 93, 94 up until uh up until 2018. Man. It was like a total of 26 years that I had been gone. Man, I now, Bri- right before you left, man. Right before yeah. you left, I had met you. You came in other place, and that's when I first met you. Said, that's, that's when you, I tell mom. Yeah. That's when your mom. Oh, yeah. Somebody told me that's who you were. Uh-huh. I got a chance to holler to meet you then at that t- particular time. So you you did some things out there on the set that, uh, that really is, uh, you know, noteworthy. And not only were you the first person to, like, take this thing nationwide but you also did some you also did some things and you shocked everybody with something like like this It took the place by storm. Everybody, oh my god! And you know that mix was nine minutes or something long. Right, oh, <laughs> right, <my God. laughs> right. I, you know, but time <laughs> wasn't it wasn't a issue back then. You know, like it is now. Man, you ain't gonna dance no couple no nine eight nine minutes now. No yeah, work, and that's but. that's like what blows my mind, right? It's it's like it's like you only dance with a woman one time now, you know, and it's like if everybody is it's it's like as soon as you get through goodbye, go and you like going to the next next person. Well, I'm like saying to myself, Hey, I haven't even got the groove with this one yet. You know, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. Right, but right. with her in the dance, so I can dance with her, but it's it's not like that anymore. But when I heard that, I said, Oh my god, I said, I got to get some of this, and I never had a chance to play that, right? <laughs> you know. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, but I liked time it. Went, you know, time went on by that record. That song, man, 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 man. Yeah. So, but that that started. Well, that was one of the things that helped to influence this remixing trend. Right, right. And I'm like, but it's like today, man. It's like today. It's it's so many remixes. You don't even know if. It's, you right. know, well, you know what? I, uh, you know, uh, as the equipment start coming out and people starting to learn how to do stuff, solve certain softwares, it looked like everybody wants to do it. You know, it's one thing about DJing from back when we were, it took some work to be a DJ back in the day. You had to have, what no sharing, you know what I mean? You couldn't share the music because you had your stack of music and this friend had his. You wasn't no MP3s to share. So we had to go shop for ourselves. So DJs just wasn't that common as they are today. 
Mm. Now, if you go get a laptop and a controller, oh, I got a few records. <laughs> I'm a DJ. And that is, I'm a DJ. And that's <laughs> so, if people used to say DJ the Diamond does it, they could say that, really say that now. Wow. Everybody's a DJ now. But wow. back in the day, no. Nah. You just had a controller. Uh, uh, and really, a lot of them people, you know, they, a lot of people that called themselves one the DJ, they kind of burned off. They found out it, it wasn't really them. Mm -hmm. The DJs are just a real DJ. I'll just put it like this. We've been DJing for so long. We've been in the music since we were kids. And some of these people picked up the stuff five years ago. And they full-blown DJ. You see what I'm saying? And we've been doing this since we were kids. We've been collecting music, and I've been playing with records and needles and turntables since I was a young guy, a, you know, a teenager. And now, now you can have a few hundred dollars and three years under your belt, and you've been the I man, I've been DJ for years. You see what I'm saying? But man, please, oh my God, it's that's just I'm how great. it is now. What is it? What is it like being a DJ? Well, you know, um, I'm always for progression. You know, uh, I never wanted to be the guy who um, who says, "Well, you know, back in my day, we really had good music, but <laughs> but, but today's music is terrible." No, it's not terrible. It's just not for me, and mm -hmm. and and it wasn't made for my demographic. You know, so uh, so uh, I'm I'm perfectly fine with um, someone going out buying a controller, getting some MP3s, and they think they can go out and DJ because you have to start from somewhere. You got to start from somewhere. So I'm okay with that. You know, you know. So um, I don't have any uh, problem with it because um, because we all progress. We started out with records, you know, and um, uh, uh, then, well, well, in the case of Reggie, he probably had one of those reel to reel, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, uh, so, um, so, uh, it's possible to go from from reel from reel to reel to vinyl uh, to uh, those uh, those uh, DAT players. Re, re, uh, remember the DAT, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those players. And uh, then the then the MP3s, you know, um, I'm okay with all. I'm sorry, and and I forgot, of course, the CDs, the compact disc, because I remember when the CDs came out, people were saying that, but they don't sound like vinyl. Vinyl sounds better, mm. and my thought was always, no, to me, vinyl does not sound better because the CD does not have the, you know, you know that that cracking sound because I'm always about about hearing the music clearly, you know. So um I'm okay with things progressing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a lot of we're getting ready to talk shop. So it's a lot of lot of things that's been going on here, you know, in the community that uh with the new DJs and so I've I've you know I pulled down my banner and my flag and uh, well I used to do it like that. I'm not into that. Yeah, you know, I just I just let you be, you know, I let you be and let you do the only my only thing is is that we ain't enough walking music out here for me, you know. It's that's just, true, that's true. I, I feel the same way. I I think I play more walking music at good times than I do any other set. Mm. Um, I'm gonna do Deja Vu on the fourth of February, and I heard that set is almost sold out. Um, I'm gonna try and squeeze in th at least three walk segments out of that. Usually. Uh, it's not done that often. You might, at a set like Deja Vu, because it's a mixture set, you might get two walk segments, which is maybe about seven songs. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to try and squeeze three. I got to play more walk music, because people complaining like crazy, they don't hear enough walk music everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's, you know, smooth it out. And, you know, you play walk music, you smooth it, get back in the stepping for so long, then you got to play, go back to walk music. People just don't hear enough walk music nowadays. They don't. You know, especially out of town, nah. and everybody plays the same walk music too. 
Mm. They always say the same stuff. <laughs> Listen, mm. if I hear ain't understanding Mello one more time, I'm going to just oh, yeah, run yeah, into a right. wall. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. Like, uh, that Jerry Butler. Butler. <laughs> the, record, the record was a beast back in yeah. the day. Yeah. But they done wore that thing to the wheels. You know what I mean? And they the only cool. reason why they play it is because it's short. You know, for them to get back into that thing. That's the only reason why they play that. They'll yeah. take they'll they'll take they'll take a segment on walk songs and they'll play like they'll play like up to eight minutes, eight to nine minutes of walking music, you know. And when right quick, and then it was one one at one time, like I heard one DJ man trying to do cutting cutting the walking songs like like in the in the middle, <laughs> you know, in the middle in of the middle song, you're going yeah, to yeah. do another song, huh? and I said, "Well, yeah, what is yeah, this?" Yeah, and one of the too. things, as far as technique playing walking, and maybe you guys can talk talk about this. That really, really bothered me is that when walkers are really walking, when you playing a walk song, you want to keep the people continuing in the walk. Going from one song to another, yeah, and yeah. and that it, they'll take a song, they'll start off with a hit, but then the second song that come in behind that will be a song that has like a a forty five second intro, and you like looking, you like mm. you, you can't get no, the beat yeah. off of that, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, just like regular uh, a regular segment of stepping music, walk mm -hmm. music has to have a flow to it too, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can't start. Nobody would hear that. You just play a decent walk song, then you got to hear some birds chirping. You know what I mean? And wind blowing before the next song come in. And all that, you <laughs> lost your flow. Yeah. You lost your groove. You yeah. lost your flow. And, and you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And a lot of times, well, we know this for a fact. And this is walkers don't change partners like steppers change partners if you're mm -hmm. on the flow and the groove is good the music is good and the woman you holding is good it is you're gonna dance that all three or four songs with that same woman mm -hmm. it, just mm -hmm. it just don't it don't change like that you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying but you're right uh you know you can put something on after a good walk and uh song your first song if you don't know what you're doing or you look and realizing what you're doing you just done lost the flow right just like if you were stepping, you could lose the flow and the neck, you know, and your flow is empty now. You know, and, and, and that <clears throat> that amazed me too. Uh, uh, you play, it's like you're up to 15 stepping songs, right? <laughs> and it's like people are tired. <laughs> so I'm saying to myself, well, this is a good time to play a walking song now because mm. people, you know, they just, and, and the song is a good song, but folks don't want to dance because they've been stepped out. Right, right, yeah, that's that that can happen too. Um, uh, uh, that's why I, right now, to me, uh, I um, I think Good Times is my favorite set mm -hmm. when it comes down to I can lay down classic music and play as much as I want. I can walk them as much as I want. You can't do that every set. Mm -hmm. You can't. Mm -hmm. Now let's. Now I'll tell you another good set that was good like that was uh, Philip C. Chosen was a good. Uh, mainstream smooth step and walker set, and that was second Sunday at Mr. G's. Remember that set, Chosen with Philip C and uh, Charlie Low. You remember that set, Reggie? I didn't go, I was gone. Oh, okay, yeah, that was a real, yeah. real good. Yeah, hey, I was, I was gone. I didn't at I at no time. Was, okay, you never saw Chosen. I'm saying, mm -mm, I didn't, listen, I didn't, I didn't see Chosen, I didn't see no sets of Sarah J's, you know, uh -huh. like when you was hitting and when it was, I I didn't, I didn't get, really get to hear you until 2018. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, I didn't get to hear you to, to 2018 because I was, uh -huh. you know, I was, I was gone. The little set that I would come in and do uh, uh, when Leanna started her set at the at the 50, you know, that was mm -hmm. the only, I, I would come and spin back for then, you know, spin in between that. But other than that, I wasn't going on the stepping scene, especially in 207 after, you know, my daughter was born. When she was born, I just didn't do, I didn't do nothing. You know, well, can I say this? A lot of the main sets that was really kicking butt that had the, the main, the, the mainstream crowd, 
Mm -hmm. I would think was people like um, Four Plus Four. Willie Cox had that was doing that party out there at the La Mirage. Uh, Act Nine was an awesome set. And that you, was do you, the do you remember party. the members of Act Nine? Somebody asked me that. Yeah, well, I know it was um, Brenda. Mm -hmm. uh, Everybody Sheila. comes up with that name. Sheila. Uh, mm -hmm. Barbara. Mm -hmm. Um, Vernon, uh, was it Bruno? Okay. Um, there's one I'm passed away. I can't think of her name. God, I can't think of her name. Uh, and um, I can't think of the other. I'm looking at their name, their faces, but I can't think of the name because it's been so many years they've been off the set. Right. They've been gone for a long time. Yeah, they've been gone for a long time. A Burl. Okay. She passed away. And then um, I can't think of the other lady's name. I'm thinking I'm looking at her face now. I can't think of her name. I don't think it's going to come out. But Burl is the one that got sick. and um, But that was an awesome set. Um, and all the main, Larry the Poet, all of them came to that party. Jeff, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, Hats, Larry, you know what I mean? Inga, you know, you name the steppers that supported a lot of the mainstream. Them people were there. Not, yeah, not. that was an awesome. And William Brown played with me for that party from the, um, from the West Side. The yep. Social clubs. I, I remember William clubs. Brown. You remember yeah. William Brown? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. From the West Side. Oh yeah. From the West Side. Yeah. Brown yeah. and DeWitt. Remember them two together? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Brown and DeWitt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, from the West Side. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, um, I used to go to to uh, the West Side parties where he was DJing. But uh, then I was into dance music, and I was trying to get into the Steppers music. You know, I'm mm. like, oh, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you come from you, Scorpio. You come from under Derek Norfleet's tree, huh? And who yeah. else? Who yep. are your influences on that dance music side? Dance, um, um, terrible Ted. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, Capitan. Uh, Bad uh, boy. Yes. Yeah, um, uh, Derek Norfleet. Um, uh, George Harris. Okay. Yeah. Um, another friend. I can't think of his name. Uh, uh, shoot. Um, but um, he also played at the Copper Box, too. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I can't think of his name right now. But, yeah, uh, those were my influence as far as the dance music goes, uh, uh, especially Derek, because nobody could mix like Derek. Nobody oh, could mess with a break oh like God. Derek. Oh Derek, God, Derek, boy, Derek, would, Derek would take the break of a song and just destroy it. He would just kill it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And this was, you talking about, this was in the 90s? No. Uh, it was the 80s. Yeah. This, is all this was in the early 80s. Early okay. 80s. Now you talking about the yeah. copper box on Halstead or the copper box on no on the Ashley? no the copper box on Halstead. Halstead, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was the, that was the that was the big one. I love that. Yes, yeah, yeah, that was the, beast uh, the copper that box was. on um, Halstead. Yeah, because yeah, um, because um, actually the owners they used to own um, the Horizon West. Mm. Yeah, and, uh, Horizon. yeah, 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 and uh, that's where I met Kenny B. Because Kenny B was at the Horizon West, and uh, I never heard of him. As a matter of fact, I also met Derek there too, and um, and because um, Kenny B would play early, but uh, his music would uh, be, you know, it, it wasn't dance music, you know, it was steppers music. But uh, we didn't call it steppers music then, you know, but uh, we we just called it. He would he would play these nice slow songs, you know, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, then Derek would take over, and it, you know it was dancing stuff. I was like, oh man, that's really nice. And and the more I listened to uh, Kenny B, because I found out that uh, he was there on some other night, and uh, I went down there. I I couldn't step in, you know. I went down there and just listened to him, and he allowed me to come up in the DJ booth and just sit. And uh, just mm. watch him play, mm. and I'm like, oh, okay, all right, okay, yes, yeah. So, um, so that's how him and I became friends, yeah. And um, and uh, when um, 
when when they lost the lease, they had um, got the lease. Um, uh, I forgot what the name of uh, the cup box used to be. Um, it was called something. I it can't... was a six and nine club. Right, right, right. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah I remember the six yeah. and nine. Yeah, it was yeah. six nine club. Yeah, six yeah. nine. Yeah, yep. I ain't heard that in years, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. that copper box turned into the sixty nine club. The no, sixty nine club, club turned into the copper box. Oh, okay, sixty nine. Right. Club turned into the yeah. That's what that was. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, because okay. uh, man, um, I, I heard that live, years, man. Mm -hmm. I used to live in the copper box <laughs> Tuesday. Yeah, the copper box was Thursday, strong. Friday, yeah. Friday. I just uh, got a text. Uh, 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 Jeff Jeff said that the uh, copper box was hot on Wednesday nights. See, I didn't yep. go to Wednesday. Was it hot? Was you there? Yeah. That yeah. Was Wednesday night was a good night for the copper box. Uh -huh. right? Wednesday night, you, you, uh, because that's because they they. They used to have the Wednesday night set at um at the Horizon West. And like I said, once and and, and that was oh that was super hot. Super yeah. hot. Wednesday, super hot. Wednesday, Wednesday as as a matter of fact, Wednesday was the Tom Joyner after work set. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was on Wednesdays. And um and it started at five o'clock. At 5 30, it was packed. Wow, mm. five thirty packed every Wednesday because they would have a singing contest there, you know. And uh, I mean, these people could actually sing. So uh, what they did was when the, when they closed it down, they took it over over to the Copper Box on Wednesday. So Wednesday was was crowded too, packed. Yes, yeah, crowded, packed. Wow, wow. Yeah. Oh, and then I wasn't around on that one. I remember going to the cop box on the weekends, you know, when because I, I was hanging with you know my little partners and my, you know we had our little girls and we used to go to cop box on Saturday night. You know, you had to squeeze in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was playing a variety, but mostly it was, you know, the seventies and eighties type music. Yeah. Man, but, I would I would go there just to hear Derek, just to wait yeah. for the breaks because he did. When I know it was just one count, one song that he just just like turned me upside down with was that Jimmy Caster bunch Space Age. Yeah, oh, that was a killer back in the day. Man, because he entered because he could play, he was like playing that for about five minutes, four or five. Yeah. You know, I was and, like, oh, listen to this boy. And, and he would all... go right back to that beginning. Yeah. That, yeah. I said, what, is this, what is this boy yeah. doing? Like, and man, back in the day, boy, and, that was a good, that was a good one, and man. this was all on turntables, right? On turntables. Right. 1200s, he was yeah. tearing them up. I said, yeah. Oh my god, some of the guys was man so good. I hate vinyl, it's gone. Yeah. I hate vinyl, yeah. it's gone. Man, I didn't get a chance to run into vinyl as much as I wanted to. After you know, the rinky dink turntables played out, everybody was on 1200s, right? You know what I'm saying? Everybody, when I started getting 1200s and getting on 1200, <laughs> it started look like records was going out. They was yeah. going out. You see what you I'm know, saying? Uh, uh, I was, uh, you know, I had my stuff, but it was, you know, uh, everything was turning into CDs then. Yeah. They wasn't making any vinyl anymore. You mm. know what I mean? And yeah. We had to go to turntable. When I first walked out working at the other place, you know how many boxes of albums I took up in there? And That's Jim what? and Don had a lot of all the CDs. The first CD I bought, do you believe this? When I was at the other place, the first CD I bought was I'll Be the One by Boss Skaggs. Mm. The first CD I ever bought. <laughs> yeah. That's the first CD I ever bought. I had I had Ronnie Jordan. I had Facts mm -hmm. of Life. I had all those all that vinyl. Everything I had, Blue Magic, everything I had was on vinyl and every stylistic album. Mm -hmm. I had everything on vinyl. I had no CDs. But well, Jeff Don had CDs. You know, I had to I said, Where am I get all this money from? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but I had to I had to try and, you know, I had to do my and get it together, you know. They I mean? spent a lot of money getting all that music together. Yeah, yeah. these these cats got it. They got it made now. I you know, they got all made. they got to do is copy stuff, and then Napster was out early. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh Nap you know, Napster helped to download off of uh -huh. LimeWire. Remember that? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. They put, they put them viruses in there and they were tearing up people's hard drives and systems. They, you know, they had to get rid of line wire. It was killing some some uh, computers. Mm. And people calling me and say, man, I shot my whole computer out. What are you doing? Download yeah. with no protection off line wire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just to get some music, you know what I mean. So and, yeah. and and then Napster made it costly for everybody because yeah, you know charged, that's, right. that DCMA that that digital you can't copy mm -hmm. that no no more file sharing. I said, like, oh god. <coughs> so we, so Mella, did you have you ever used the computer or are you still using the uh the uh mechanized controllers with the uh? Power amp, I mean, with the preamps in them and things like that, the big preamps. No, you talking about for my system that I did yeah. with? Yeah, I'm just using regular controllers. Denon is my game. I always use Denon controllers. I use Denon CD players, like the 2500, the 2600s. Uh -huh. Those came out with the automatic loops on them when we was playing CDs. Uh -huh. I was kind of getting those. When I first started looping with that, Vincent said, you know, I got a, a dinner and I can do the same thing. I never did it out loud. I said, you got a loop on it? He said, yeah. <laughs> he found out and went home and called me, Vincent Rundell, and I said, I can do the same thing you're doing. He said, I'm going to mess with it. He's been messing with it ever since. You know, I mean, from that moment on, he started messing with it. Well, you didn't know what I think? He was making his own stuff and own grooves and mixes with mm -hmm. loops in the front and loops in the back or whatever you want to do. Okay. And but I had I had about the twenty five hundreds by then, mm -hmm. and that's how I found out how to do it. And um, <laughs> make a long story short, I know another DJ. He did it live at the East of the Ryan. Check this out. He put on "I Cried All the Way Home" by the four, by the Dramatics, right? Uh huh. And he actually put the loop on there, boom, and it it, it looped, and everybody was dancing. The flow was nice. And, he didn't know how to take it out of the loop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What happened was, uh, d d I mean, the dancer was going all the way around the floor. They yep. came back and said, dude. I sure was, let, let, let the record, the left, let the record. Oh, my God. It, man, it was so. And guess what he wound up doing? He never figured it out. What? He just put another song in the next drawer. And and just ended it just like that, and just turned it. <laughs> and that's all you had to do was hold the button down, and, and then it come out the loop. Come out, come out. Come out the loop. Yeah, yeah. he didn't know how to do it. <laughs> so he didn't mess with it long enough to figure out how to wow. do it without, you know what I mean. Just in case, you got to learn it. You got to work on it. You got to, you know what I mean. That's how it was. It's an in button and it's an out, but he couldn't figure yeah. it. Out. So <laughs> yep. Oh my God! I think the thing looped for about two, five minutes, two to three, five minutes. Oh my God! <laughs> so you know that has, has happened to DJs. You know what I mean? Got to know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with that that that, that dinner with the where Andre, you had one of them things too, right? Where we had the top deck and then the draw two draw decks in the bottom, oh, and it was yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. I think most of the DJs started with the, that system now. You know, yeah. they got imitated by them generic companies like uh, New Mark, DJ, Gemini. Yeah. yeah. Garbage. And Gemini. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Gemini was awful. Yeah, it was awful, awful. Awful. Yeah. Oh, my God. You waste yeah. your money. I see to be with a Gemini system. I'm like, oh, dude, well, I'm going to yeah. spend on that. Yeah. But, yeah, um, that's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. We knew uh, what to buy and what not to buy back in the day, but yeah. it cost a lot of DJs money to know what they were doing. Mm, yeah. They wasted a lot of money buying garbage. Oh, it was on sale. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Scorpio, yeah. you so you brought out you pulled out the laptop at uh each of the Ryan. Yes, yes. Uh I was the first I was the first DJ um and I know in Illinois to DJ with a laptop. Yeah, and um, because I was telling uh, Sam Chapman about it, and um, he asked me, could I DJ one of his sets at the East of the Ryan? And I said, yeah, you know. So um, I came down and was, D and was DJing with the laptop with just MP3s. And uh, that was that was when I can remember meeting you, Mellow Chris, Mm -hmm. I remember meeting you and Steve Breeze. Yeah. Uh, do you remember that? I don't remember. And that was around yeah. what time? Uh, huh? Friday night, East of the Rhine. Yeah. Uh, 
time. Yeah, yeah, because you were uh, DJing. Okay. Yeah, because um, um, Steve Breezer came up to me and he was asking me questions about it and stuff, and you know, uh, um, uh, uh, what am I? Uh, uh, what do I have for a backup? And I told him I don't have anything for a backup. And he said, "What if it crash?" And I told him it's not going to crash because this is the this is the field that I'm in the computer field. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I know how to, you know, you know right. what to do and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, Sam was uh, fascinated by it, you know, and uh, then um, I think um, a few months after that, that that's when I uh, went to the, um, to, um, to um, uh, on Michigan. Um, and why can't I think of the name of the place? Um, uh, the um, the uh, place on Michigan where um, I was for seven years. Um, At Chick Ricks? No, no, no. Um, on thirteen. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, um, I went down there with the laptop, and uh, then <clears throat> because it was it was so new, DJing off of a laptop, there were no controllers out mm -hmm. there was no con no controllers out so um i just had to use the software for it so uh it was just going from one song to the other you know there was no mixing you right. know yeah yeah and um um then um um her kent had came down there and uh, he saw what i was doing and him and i had a conversation and um he um he would like come like um every every week you know, and 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 um, I told him where to get it from, and all this other stuff. You know, and uh, then and then he started using the laptop and stuff. But when, when they came out with a controller, this controller was 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 a, was about this thin, and it was about this long. You know, it, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 it wasn't nothing big, but uh, and all you could do was just cue up the song, and 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 do loop looping with it but but i was happy then i, I was like ooh, i can mix a little bit you know right. yeah. Yeah. and as time went went on the equipment got better and better and better and better you know yeah hey, yeah. Friend, well, then, when i was there i came down there fine though that's what you was using the controller i mean the uh, computer i didn't know anything about it then none of us yeah did. you were the only person on it then even when you yeah. were down there I do none mm. of us. Uh, mm. I think Herb was he had one there. I think he called it the lunchbox or something. Did you remember that? Uh, I got to recall this. Yeah, it was uh, like a box, and it had yeah, uh, uh, you know, yeah, be, be because I I told him where to get it from, where to order from, from a company called DJ Power because DJ Power <clears throat> had it had it set up to where as you can buy their laptop. And um, it comes in 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 like a lunch box, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, then uh, I I think they were asking like about five or six thousand dollars for, for the thing, you know. Oh yeah, it was expensive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So Andre, how did you get the how did you get the inspiration to start playing oh, on uh, uh, on the uh, computer? Well, uh, first of all, my um, first of all, I was. DJing at some place, and um, I packed all of my stuff up and put it in the van. And um, I was too tired to uh, mm. to bring it in the house. I woke up the uh, next morning, the whole van gone, with all of my music, all of my, my turntables, my CD players, everything just gone. You know, so uh, that's what made me leave the scene. But then, <clears throat> then, uh, um. Then I had friends of mine, mine who offered to um, give me doubles of what they had and stuff, you know. So, um, so I went in there, bought some CD players and some turntables and stuff. But, but it's still, yeah, I didn't have my music. So uh, one day, I I I called Reggie, you know, and and I'm and I'm talking to him, and. Um, you know, uh, and he started telling me about computers, just computers in general. It, it wasn't about music, you know. 
And um, he was telling me about the hard drives and, and stuff like that. And and I asked him, uh, and I was like, so can you put music on the hard drive? And he was like, yeah. And I'm like, well, can you play it from the hard drive? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm so uh, I so I'm fascinated by this, you know. And I'm I'm like, oh, okay, wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know. So uh, anyway, long story short, <clears throat> I found some software on the internet, which was DJ Power then, and 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 and, and they would let you try it out for like one week. So. So I um, uh, um, downloaded onto my com computer, which 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 was a, a tower, come computer. And I listened to the music, and I, I'm like, okay, this sounds pretty good, you know. So I wound up buying myself a laptop and and uh, got some MP3s, and 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 I and I had my music back, you know. Yeah, yeah. but uh, it all came from a conversation. And I think the uh, conversation was a, was about a thirty minute conversation with the professor Reggie Miles. So because of him, that's what made me get the computer. Mm. That's what that, yep, yep, that's that's what made me. And look you had full the software. confidence, huh? You wound up with full confidence that you could play a set with no problem, and it wouldn't. Stop, stutter, you know how right. Well, you, 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 right, you, right. Uh, uh, um, I'm gonna tell you why I had the confidence. Uh, the uh, confidence really <clears throat> came from two things. Number one, I had to make sure that I had the right specs for the computer, right. and and I had to know what the right specs were, and Reggie was so knowledgeable of computers he taught me what to look for and what to do and uh if uh, this doesn't work well you have to uh, do this and then do that to fix it you know so um uh, as, as a matter of fact he uh, he told me my first computer what computer to get so i got it i got mm -hmm. the computer and I started just deleting files. I started deleting sy system files, you know, because I wanted to break it. Because I wanted to see if I could bring it back. Mm -hmm. And I, I was able to to uh, do that. And uh, bring it back up. Right. Yes. Yes. And um, once I <clears throat> once I purchased the software. And I got the laptop and I got some music onto the laptop. I actually <laughs> would play music off the laptop 24 7, seven days a week. I did it for one straight week. I would mm -hmm. go to work, come home, music still still playing. You know, uh, 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 I, you know, uh, um, I just did my my regular thing, you know, I just for a whole week and it didn't crash. So I'm like, okay, this is okay. Number two, I had, it's a good software. It's a good steady software. So I had the right specs on the laptop and I had good software, good hardware, good software. And then I was ready. And uh, even through the whole time, through, through the whole time I was out there playing off the laptop, I never had the laptop crash. Never had a crash. No, I mean, yeah. a lot of us were scared back in the day, I guess. <laughs> so, I didn't have enough information uh, to uh, to get into it when I first saw it. Then I saw Eric Taylor had one after I saw <laughs> her. But I, you were the first. And mm -hmm. I think Herb was the second. And then I saw Eric Taylor with one DJ Eric Taylor. Mm -hmm. and that, that's the only three people I have until the actual software has got famous out here. And people start using that Hercules controller. Remember yeah. that was the first controller with that little Hercules yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. and, and then that's when I think DJ starts it starts spreading and growing. And yeah. then, uh, other companies start doing the controllers and now yeah. We got yeah. a monster field of controllers out here to find. Right. Yep. And um, and um, and 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 now, 
I don't even use a laptop. I just use the uh, Denon XC 6000s. Okay. Those right Denon. there. No laptop. All of the music is on the internal hard drive. Right, mm. right. I have the yeah. uh, the Prime Go now. Yeah, it's there you standalone. go. Standalone. Yeah, the yeah. Prime Go is a standalone, or you could use it with the with the laptop. Yeah, yeah right. So I, yeah. I just purchased that and started using that at a couple of parties, but mm -hmm. it has a little glitch in it. I did a party and I just wasn't pleased with. I used oh, really? a thumb drive okay. to upload a song, and the uh -huh. actual uh um prime go jumped out of the laptop because i had i didn't have it in the standalone mode i had it in the laptop mode oh mm -hmm. so i had a glitch in it and i figured out what it was somebody else showed me what i did oh. and what was going on but oh. uh yeah that's the new thing now with the one the standalones yeah and sometimes you could pull up a controller uh, me a, 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 it also can work with uh just like yeah. you probably can too yeah yeah, yeah. working standalone or it could work yeah. with a laptop like, right. right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right, cheap yeah. I saw it like a thousand dollars, yeah. But uh, 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 it was, yeah, uh, uh, yes, the um, uh, the SC 6000, uh, the Denon, um, yes, uh, it, it can work with a laptop, but it was designed to work without one, without mm -hmm. one, right, yes. So you had to go yeah. get the the um, uh, uh, go to the actual software, whatever company. And, and and pull up the drives or something to get it to go through the set, the laptop, right? You had to use the drives or go download the drives. Or didn't you have to download something? The drivers, or or the is drivers. it? Yeah. No. When I, no. When I got the drivers, I, I had to go to virtual to pull up those drivers <laughs> or to go into the laptop mode. Other than that, it won't go to the laptop mode. If you oh, oh, the oh, oh, the 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 you, the you, the you talking about? If you want to use the laptop, yes, yes. You had to go for yeah, yeah. You had to download the drive. Right. right. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. The right. File. Yeah. And then it'll go into the laptop mode. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Gotcha. 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 <clears throat> yeah. So That's when that, thing. so when that, yeah. so when that Denon, they'll do it start up. So it's actually starting up as a computer too within yeah. itself. Okay. Yeah. So then the config sys on that will look. To connect, is it is the connection through USB? Yeah. Or Thunderbolt? USB. Okay. USB or uh, XLR, the, uh, each yeah. kind of way. RCA. Yeah, okay. The, the, yeah. the Prime Go got, got three hookups. You can do it at RCA, U, uh, yeah. LXR, or you could do with the uh, quarter inch. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, any kind of way you want to hook it up. Yeah, and you know, it goes yeah. right into what the system that and that thing running. and that thing still reads. It reads. Uh, will it read an external hard drive or the, or flash drives when yes. you put it in? Yeah. It'll read wherever yeah. you got the music. Right. It'll read yeah. it. Right. Oh, yeah. that's cool. That's yeah. cool. so the, the, the problem go got the uh, what's that? Uh, it's got the other thing you put in there. Oh, shit, what's the name of that disc? It's a the, disc um, you put in there. SD uh, drive. Yeah, yeah. Are you are you talking about the SD drive? Oh yeah, you talking about the little little uh car? Okay, cool. Yeah. The yep. SD drive with the prime. Yeah, yeah, because you can get you can get them up to two fifth two hundred fifty six gig gigs. Right, right. You can get them yeah. yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, right. right. Well, yeah because uh, 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 yeah, because uh, in 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 my SE six thousand, I have a um a two terabyte hard drive. Mm -hmm. right. There you go. That I mm -hmm. put in, you know. There yeah. you go. Yeah, that's a lot of DJs that's um, going off and buying a whole lot of different. Um, yeah. I, I've never seen. I only seen one other person that's got the uh, Prime Go. Uh, uh, Dennis uh, out there in uh, D uh, Dallas, he has it, and um, Tony See, Lane. gonna make me get one of them. Tony <laughs> Lane, he's doing it too, and he, uh, oh, him, okay. and uh, Johnny Flo has the uh, Prime Go, and mm -hmm. he was DJing without the laptop. Yeah, and I went in there yeah. to the fifty yard line on Mondays, and I saw it. And that what's made me interested. And I had already heard about it, but until yeah. I saw it in action, that's what made me go buy one. Yeah, yeah well, so I'm going to have to get one. And so, so Valerie said, Mellow, Andre, and Reggie Miles should get together and have a reunion set. That would be <laughs> off the chain, seriously. Ah, they put, oh, they, you know what? They lift some eyes would be. Like, oh. uh -huh. <laughs> and they heard me in it recently, and I think they heard the last time you played, Reggie. Uh, I last time I played, I was in St. Louis. 
Oh, uh, for a step Ganza. I did a okay. day setting. Step. Oh, no, I did a day setting step again. I'm going I'm doing two this year. I'm gonna do the day, do a day set uh, down at Step of Union with Irie, and then I'm gonna be in Houston. Uh, cause I I want I don't want to do a set unless it's all classic. I don't want to do a set unless it's all classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel you. You know I can. Yeah. You know I don't want to do no set where I have to compromise. You know. Right, and it's right. not it's not that I don't like uh, it's it's not that I don't like what the young people are doing or nothing like that. Uh, I mean, it it was it's just a different just like Andre said about the the other new music. It's it's just some of the newer music is just not me. Yeah. It's just not for me, right, and right. I I don't want to. I really don't want to. You know, try to make myself be something that I'm not. Right. You know, and I, cause I gotta play some walking music, man. Cause you know, after after me after me working with Mister Bernard, you know, and him having a fit, you know, if I'm trying to jam, and he's man, ain't nobody buying no drinks. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody oh, buying no yeah. drinks, you know. Yeah. And yeah. then when he, and then he would never come up off the sixty five seventy five dollars he was paying until he said, "Well, yeah, well then you need to go after a buy guarantee." I said, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> and so I told Andre that next thing you know, we working, we working the Wednesday, and we working Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday on bar guarantees. He wouldn't give us nothing on Saturday because he knew everybody was coming in there. But the nights during the week, yeah. oh man, he had the bar guarantee, and we was getting 15, 20 percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All over a certain amount. So hey, I was getting y'all money because uh yeah, you know uh, down at the 50 and Maceo found out uh, <laughs> he was playing his DJs. What the 50 was playing, they DJs down there, so he brought me down. Wow. Maceo and Willa got together. I hate to use these names, but when they got together, you know, because they, you know, they, they was real close and real tight. And one one found out, hey, you paying your DJ what? I'm paying my DJ this. And I came down to dollars. <laughs> That's how it was. You know what I mean? Yeah. But hey, uh, um Chris. They weren't paying no money in the club <clears throat> back in the day. You you know, you can sit there all night. You wasn't getting no money. Chris. You, know, you had to do multiple nights. Uh, -huh. uh um, what is your favorite mix that you've done? Oh my god. I probably this stuff I was doing when I was on the radio. You know, I used to work for Crawford Broadcasting Company with mm -hmm. Jim Rags. Yeah. And I did a lot of stuff there. But it was mostly commercial, but it was Stephens music mixes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I did quite a few of them. And Rags called me last week and asked me, um, you know, I'm gonna have to re-edit some of them so he can have them again because they, I had to put drops in them when I was with Soul 106. So mm -hmm. now uh uh I can't put my name and all that stuff in it because I'm not with the station, affiliated with the station anymore. So I have to get him to dry mixes. So uh, I'm, I'm going to go and uh, share them with him again after ones I can find so he could have something else to play. And I might get back in and making a few more. You know, they'd just be just for him. You know what I mean? But uh, I did quite a few of them. If you heard a couple of them, you probably would trip out. As a matter of fact, I have to send you one, guys, one of them so you can hear it. Uh, you probably never, uh, you know what I mean. It's just some stuff that my mind just told me to do this, and when you yeah. hear it, you gonna y'all gonna freak, freak out. And I gotta send it to both y'all, so I got it. Uh, I'm gonna send it to you. I, I probably just send it through y'all because it's a big file. I might have to send okay. it through y'all to um, uh, what's the other uh, the box or something? Box. Box or either, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, we transfer. I will send the we transfer. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. We transfer is back okay. up now. Yeah, so yeah, that's the, cool. we, yeah, the we transfer. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 yeah, but I yeah. Just made a, quite a few of them, man. But yeah, man, I, there's so many here and there that I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think most of my creative stuff was yeah. when I was with the radio. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. I'll share and then let y'all check some of that out. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, um, I have heard quite a bit of your mixes from other DJs. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked to Sundance. From Sundance other DJs. I met Sundance. I, wait, a minute, minute, wait, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh -huh. hold on. Hold on. I'm not talking about them trying to copy you. I'm talking about just actually playing your full mixes. Oh yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, 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 yeah. People yeah, go did. ahead. Yeah, I did go a ahead. lot of stuff and then I did a lot of edits. 
You uh, know what I mean? Not that not even full mixes, but they were like edits. I would take a song and take it apart and put stuff uh, with it and put it back together and give it an ending. Mm -hmm. And I, so I did that kind of stuff for a while too. Yeah, especially when I was working at 3G. Man, they keep them young folks happy. You know what oh, I mean? Okay. That was uh, that kept the crowd. You know what I mean? People was in there on Tuesday night. It was yeah. just a new school party, and that's what it turned out to be. My gender oh, okay. probably didn't like it at first, but after it started bringing that crowd in there like that, it couldn't mm -hmm. be nothing to go with it. You know what I mean? But it was a new school party on Tuesday nights at 3G's. That's what it, it came be. That's what it became. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you, but yeah, well, I'm gonna get some yeah. information and then I'll send you those. Let y'all check those out. Okay. Well, um, you know, Stepper's music. You know, um, <clears throat> I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say that the music has, um, has evolved. I would say people doing the dance, they have evolved, and which it should evolve. <laughs> Because the young people, they are getting into it. So of course, they don't. They 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 might not necessarily want to hear what the what the season steppers are used to hearing. Because because they just think different, you know, and and they are listening to the music differently, you know. Uh, uh, <clears throat> So um, I think it's more so about the dance that mm -hmm. has evolved, you know. Well, uh, you know what? It's, go ahead. You know, they go got ahead. so much energy. They can dance off a 15 minute mix. Right, you know right. I mean? yeah. Or if you put three songs together and they got raps and stuff in them, they can do it. When yeah. they're older, the seasoned uh, steppers are not going to put up with that because they can't right. laugh. They don't, right. you know what I mean? And then it ain't their type of music. And, season people and, want, yeah, they want music they can reminisce with. Sing and, along. They can't sing and, along with that garbage. They can't sing along with the new stuff. Exactly. But, well, not but. Um, however, <clears throat> because because Stepin does have a history. Uh, the uh, the dance itself has a history. Just like um, um, doing the Cha 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 that has history, you know. Um Steppin music has history. So um um I would be happy if the old and the new could be combined, you know. Um but uh I don't know, but it sounds as as if it's either one or the other. Mm. You know, no. let me say this about this, and Reggie. Go ahead, and, I, and I'll you come got after you. A mixture party like Deja Vu is a mixture. You got some people that's new to the set, new to the game. You got classy people, you got season steppers, and you got a few new school in there. So what you try and do, and it's kind of it's kind of rough sometimes, but you got to give them a nice blend. You got to be able to keep everybody happy. And, you know, you got to raise the roof for a little bit in the middle of the party. They have to keep the young folks, let them sweat a little bit, you know, plus a few of the season uh, steppers. They like the little bounce too, you know what I mean? But not much. But you got to hit the smooth steppers. You got to hit the mid temples and get the party ready for the middle of the party. And that's when you're going to give it the blast. <clears throat> then after, you know, and then you can come back and work around more me and smooth, you know what I mean? Now, I'm not excluding walks all in between that stuff. But when you got, it's hard to get a mixture like that together. Older people don't want to be bothered with young folks. That's just how it is. Now, if you got a sprinkle, then you might get away with it and they can just say, okay, this is, you know, it's not, they got so-and-so here, so-and-so there. But if you just got new school and old school parties, they're not going to mix. What do you think, Reggie? It's not gonna mix. Well, now especially down in Chicago, you ain't gonna see them. Well, it's you know, bad. one of the things, one of the things that that uh, that I can't, I can't forget, and I have, I can't forget the fact that I was young when I when I was coming in when I came in. I was a young man, and for me, uh, I was just excited to be. At that level of set, 
I was just excited because uh, the the Stebbins community was never mainstream. It was like exclusive. You know, you would like, you would see a whole mixture of all kinds of people. You know, you had professionals, you had players, you had, you know, it was just, it was, it was, it was like an elite type of thing uh, for us. It wasn't, it wasn't common as like a, a house party or any, that was, that never had been the case. And so inside the set, uh, I was like, I would get excited if I could, if a, if an older dude or if an older cat, somebody talked to me to kept me in the game, you know, uh, it was, it was, it was a different type of different type of atmosphere, uh, you know, where we, where we were together in this place. And I never knew any distinction between old and new music. So I come out, I, I was on set, like I'm in 71, 72, right? And I'm going to, to the sets with Mary O's, I mean, Mary O's and Black Mary and them, all, all those elders, Alice, Dan sets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I hear Shirley Scott. And that came out in 1965. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that whether it was new or old. All I know is that, that all I know is that, that doom, 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 doom. I, I lost my mind. I thought that I was gone. Cause I was dancing to the music. Right. Uh, I was right. dancing to the music. And so with the styles of the music changing, uh, I don't hear the orchestration like, uh, like that Shirley Scott or the life in the country or, or, uh, even that Bob Skaggs. I don't, I don't hear the orchestration uh, in the music like that, I, I I hear this this beat, and by me being a part time dancer too, I'm understanding the dynamics of why people got to have this music like this because they in this one two three four five mm -hmm. six seven. Oh, they count. Yeah, one yeah. two three yeah. four five yeah. six seven eight. They into that, they and into where that. I never knew anything about that. I my, I got the feeling from my my brothers and from my mama. My mama said <laughs> she gave it to me like that, and then I moved into doing what I was doing myself. So there was never any distinction. So I was like, when I was going to these sets as a young man, for me to see somebody like uh, Lonnie Clark or Bishop Don, <laughs> you know, and I was <laughs> Dr. That's Julius right. Gore. Charlie Green. I'm seeing all these these people, man. I'm I'm just cool with it. Mm -hmm. So I think it might be too much of an overemphasis on what music is all about. Because bottom line is good music is good mm -hmm. music. If a song lasts fifty years, <laughs> I mean, come on now. It's a it's a killer. It's, it's uh, killer. Come on now, <laughs> come on. <laughs> you know, if it's look, if you play this love by the Joy Tones, man, you know, if you play loving you, if you play loving you by the Gifts, even uh, even if you do Colonel Abrams now, if you do uh, 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 good things, if you do, I really love you, Harold Melvin. Oh yeah. Uh, you walked into my life, the spinners. When you do these kind of good music, transcends generations. It used to be a time when uh, I would DJ, and if I'm playing for young people, old people, whatever. But if I wanted to reach, all I had to do was play the girls all right with me, and all old folks, ah, you know, or it's all oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, taste, yeah, I mean, yeah. by the impressions, I don't know if we have that type of music that's out like that anymore. Nah, nah, nah. And so we got to, we got to us, the DJs now that the, we got to really do some work. Cause I'm going to tell you outside of you, Mello, it's not, it's not too many of the cats that's on set today know how to play any walking music. Mm -hmm. That's why they play the same songs man, all man. the time. Because that's that, that music. I, uh, people, some people had said to me, they said, uh, one thing about it is you, you're not going to play the same stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Andrea, Andrea uh, is one of the ones that, and uh, Valerie and them, when they, they know mm -hmm. I'm gonna play something different. I gotta come up out of that. That's mm -hmm. why I like today. I prefer the real set. 
I don't even want to do a new school set. I don't want to be around it like that no more. You know what I mean? It's not me anymore. Mm-hmm. I like to do a pure stepping set. And I want to, I, if, I, if I ain't got to hold back, I don't want to hold back what I need to play or what I want to play. Mm-hmm. It's proud, mm-hmm. You see know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And by me being seasoned, I'm a senior now. I don't want to hear none of that stuff. When it comes down to my choice, I want to play the right, the real stuff. You know what I mean? That's what I want to do. I want to play the real stuff. Now, I might put a twist with it. A little twist with it, but not. I mean, but that, but off. that's cool. That is really cool None because a at a step of set, uh-huh. at a step of set, there was always a mixture of music. It, I mean, I mean, it was always some good current music being played at at a step of set. You know, and like in in the early '90s, right in the uh, just before I was leaving, when me and Andre was uh, doing Richard Willis and them set at the Click, Andre was breaking good thing, good good thing, uh, good things with uh, from Colonel Abrams, and I really love you because he was Andre had became a hunter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he became a hunter. I yeah. mean, he was vicious with his hunting. Yeah. You, you was know, at the connection and, at the very end, Andre. Andre. Uh-huh. Andre? Use with the connection to the oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. me and Elvia, me and Elvia yeah. started, yeah. Oh, y'all started the connection, mm-hmm. yeah. we and, me and Elvia yeah. started, yeah. him and uh, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. him and uh, what time was it? What year was they done? Was it 92, 91, 92, 93? What was it? I don't remember. You can't I remember. remember. No, I don't remember. Remember. They had a good five. Good yeah. five year run. Them yeah. along with them that Thursday set at Ricky's, and then yeah. when they did their first Sunday set, that they they set was so hot that first Sunday. That yeah, that yeah. that yeah. gave the old timers that gave old timers the the problem because the old timers would have they set and the old timers they was leaving out the, they was leaving the copper box yeah. at like six six thirty. Yeah. Because yeah. you couldn't get upstairs. Yeah. At, at Richard Neal said after yeah. seven. Yeah. I heard it was, yeah, first Sunday, I heard that was a beast. You yeah. couldn't get yeah. up the stairs. Yeah, you couldn't get up there. Ain't too yeah. many sets that really yeah. uh, grabbed that crowd on the yeah. first Sunday. You know, yeah. it was like a one of a kind. Yeah, uh, yeah, for a long uh, time, uh, hey, and I think the taste did something real good behind it. You remember the fourth Sunday at the taste? Yeah, that yeah, good times yeah, they did that. Yeah. That was a real good set. That was a real yeah. good set. Yeah, you know what I mean? but, something um, just stood yeah. out. Reggie mm-hmm. and uh, Alvia, they would have that first Sunday just. Oh, that first Sunday was just killing. That first Sunday was off the chain. Yep, and uh, then I remember uh, Reggie had left. And uh, then it was just Alvia, and um, um, they would all well, um, Alvia, uh, which um, which uh, her and Reggie did this too. But like I said, Reggie had left, and uh, Alvia, um, she would um, uh, halfway through the set, she would put on a um, a long song, and she would come downstairs and she, to where she would introduced the members and uh and uh i was there just at the set because i because i like the steppers music you know and um so i so i am there and she downstairs and she introduced in the group and then the record started skipping i without thinking i got up out my chair <laughs> and, <laughs> went up and, there went there and went upstairs to um to uh fix it <laughs> you know yeah 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 but those man those 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 were fun times that's all oh fun yeah man. if i could turn back the hand of time I, we had way more fun than we did uh fun the way things are now with the economy and uh, with the yeah. world with the shape it's in now, yeah. uh, it was way more fun. smoother. Yeah. And yeah. people just don't do that. They could look back yeah. at uh, <laughs> the steps we used to go to back in the day. Everybody yeah. would say, oh, my God, we had a ball. Remember yeah. the Midland and the Ridgeland Club? Oh, Man. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Big time. Big time. Yeah. Remember Tuesday nights at the dance sets? We had a ball. We ain't worried about getting up in the head on our way to the car. You know yeah. what I mean? We just I remember um um when I was playing for these steppers, um 
that's that's all I cared about. I just ate and slept Stepper's music. I would listen to the radio. I would listen to the radio, watch television all the time. And whenever I would hear something, something on there, all I think about, ooh, they're going to love this on Thursday nights. Because I re, I re, I remember once I was I was I was I was watching the tonight show. <clears throat> And um, Tom Jones was was one of the guests. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, he did the remake of uh, that song by uh, Liz Hogue. What was the name of the cut? Um, Dream Love. You know, huh? Yes. Dream Love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, 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 no. you talking about Move Closer. Right, right, right. Move Closer. Right, right, right. Oh, so, yeah. Phyllis Nelson. Phil Nelson. Yeah, right. Thank you. Phyllis Thank Nelson. you. Phil Nelson, right. yeah, uh, um, and uh, I saw him do that, and and I'm like, that sounds nice. Okay, so I went out and found it, all, found it, brought it on Thursday nights, <laughs> mm -hmm. and and they loved it, and and nobody could guess who it was. And I told him it was Tom Jones. They was all shocked, but I do remember this one song that I broke. And um, it was um, Kenny Loggins, uh, Too Early for the Sun. Oh, yep. get out of here. Yeah. You broke that song, yep. man? Yes, yes, oh, yes, yes. yes. I broke that song at the East of the Rhine. I'm sorry, uh, 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 at Mr. Ricky's. And uh, I remember the um, first time, be, 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 because I had, I, I was on a roll. Because I because I knew that I had to be on a roll to introduce this new song that they never heard. Right. right, so, right. Yeah. So um, so I played it, and the floor cleared, mm -hmm. and I'm like, uh, uh oh. Okay. <laughs> well, no, you know what? Uh, um, uh, I was just just like, okay, all right. But I never would cut a song, and that's a long song. So I let right. it play. I I let it play. And and all I said was new new music by Kenny Loggins, and I didn't say nothing else, and nobody, not one person, not one couple danced off of it. I let it play, and then when it went off, uh, um, uh, I started playing other stuff, you know, got the crowd back and stuff, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, I'll, well, I'll try next Thursday. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. next Thursday came, I put the song on again. Nobody danced. They, they cleared yeah, the yeah, yeah. dance floor. Can't believe they let a record like that go by twice. Huh? I can't believe so, they let a record like that go by twice. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And this time, while the song was playing, I I cut the song off, and I got on the mic because that because because that, that by that time I was pissed. I said, "Y'all call yourself steppers. This is a hot." Stepper's song and y'all won't even dance off of it, but that's all right. And and I and I started back up and I let it play, and mm. nobody danced off of it. So um, so I just said, all right, well, okay, fuck it. You know, you know, uh, they, they they don't like it, they don't like it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I decided, all right, well, I'm not going to force on them, but I, I think it's a great song, and I'm going to force on them. So the next, so the next week. A lady came up and asked me, "Can you play that song by Kenny Rogers?" And <laughs> yeah, and, 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 oh uh, yeah, yeah. and uh, I'm like Kenny Rogers. I don't have a song by Kenny. And uh, uh, then, then um, uh, um, I said, "Oh, you mean Kenny Loggins?" And uh, she, she said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, Kenny something." And I, and, and I told her, but they don't like it here. And uh, she said, "Well, I like it." And I said to her, well, when did you first hear it? And uh, she said, I heard you play it last week. And I said, well, why didn't you dance off of it then? And and she said, well, nobody would have danced with me. But now but now I have my dance partner. So can you play it? Mm -hmm. And I said to her, you have to you make sure you dance off this song. Mm -hmm. And she said, OK. So I played it. And she danced. And then a few more other couples got on. And before the song was over, the floor was packed. Oh, packed. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. So you had to play that three times. You had a yes. three time run before yep. you actually got a result. But yeah. you know, it starts out kind of slow. So, right. Right. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, then, and then in the groove gonna get there, you know what I mean? Right. But maybe mm-hmm. you can cue it up a little bit so they can yeah. uh, play it behind something hot or in that tempo. Oh, and then, yeah. you know what I mean? I know you probably tried every trick oh, yeah. in the book, but sometimes oh, yeah. you know, it takes longer for some songs than others. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah, but um, but after that, uh, whatever I, it, whatever I play new, they were they were they were fine with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, I, it became I got hooked on a song I think through Steve or somebody. It might have been Steve Breeze that had really played that song hard. I didn't ever know who it where it came from, you know, and it never came about. But I didn't know that you actually. Were the first DJ to play that song. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, uh, you can't go by if you don't hear that this set, you're gonna hear that the next set. Yeah, you know I mean? it's just a song that <laughs> it's yeah. just never favorite now. You know, it's a, it's a must, yeah. and yeah. we get requests for that song now on the radio. Yeah, to early yeah. Uh, early uh, uh, um, I uh, I I also broke um, e enigma sadness. Wow, oh, yep. yeah, that was a good one. Down, yep. down at yep. Chick Ricks. I, yeah. I, I, I broke that song. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yep. Yeah, that was a killer. Mm-hmm. That 11 minute. Yeah. You want to get to that second part with that? Yeah, right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 For a while, we only heard the first part of it. At least I didn't have the CD right away. And mm-hmm. then uh, it jumped yeah. into that second part. And I was like, oh, God. Yeah. 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 Because, because I, didn't know. Yeah. I first heard that song while, while I was watching MTV. And I'm like, oh, man, that's a ooh, that's a cold cut there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, where that comes from either, but it was yeah. all those songs. Those yeah. two songs were established, and yeah. uh, I heard other DJs play them, so I just fell in line. That's how I came. Like I said, that's that. That's all I cared about then was just Stepper's music. Stepper's music. Stepper's music. Yeah, man. Well, the the only one I well I broke a bunch, but the oh, one yeah. I know that I really broke. Excuse was, me, fellas. One second. One second. Go okay. ahead. Continue. All right, but uh, the one that I really broke was. Was deeper, <laughs> deeper. Oh, Baby's oh. kids. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, you know from that mm-hmm. from that movie, I oh, broke yeah, that. Okay. Then, uh, well, it was a couple. Mm-hmm. Chuck Stanley, never gonna yeah. leave you. Right. Yeah. And Porter yeah. Carroll, picture uh, on the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, um, uh, you also broke, um, uh, Gene Lupante. John, yeah, John, which one? Modern Time Blues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Modern yeah. Time Blues. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we did yeah. some things. We did oh, yeah. some things and, and we rolling. Yeah. We are rolling. We've been rolling. Now, I, I this is this is a good one. I, I didn't expect this one to be like this one, but it is <laughs> what it is. Mm-hmm. So you and, and Mellow's back, so it is what it is, and so let's uh let's see where we can go. We've all reminisced. Okay, uh, what is it that you would think? What is it that you think that would make the community better, Mellow, if you with us? Okay, we'll get back with Melo. Andre, uh, okay, my man, I'm back. Okay, okay, what? Well, he was back. Oh, oh, he froze. He froze. No, uh, he back. He it, it'll be in a minute, but uh, what is it that you think that would help to make the the uh, the scene better? Because it's one thing the things that we got in common is that we all went to the point and then we quit. <laughs> we got to the point, we quit. <laughs> You know, we we you know we just got tired of it and stopped doing it. You know, sometimes well, you know what? It was- to me, uh, my ending point of uh, the step set, the scene fairly out of town is that you know everything is a competition to me. It mm-hmm. looks like uh, Steve uh, used to say 
I used to wonder why, you know, some people would act a little funny, you know, when it came down to, uh, like I had, uh, like my ego or something got in the way of my, the, the way I was being, my success. I put it like that when it come down to the DJ. And, you know, I always been the same type of person the whole time. You know, when I, somebody called me, asked me to do a party because I played uh, for Joanne and Wade, uh, Joanne and Wade and, and then uh, I, I was the guest at Black Tie with uh, Brad and them, you know, Brad and Fish and uh, Pete and Dimples. And, mm-hmm. you know, so I got picked to do a lot of little sets and a lot of, I was down at, at Shea Roof. I wound up playing at Shea Roof a few times. But uh, it was never a situation where I was wondering why, you know, I would get a little, throw a little shade, you know what I mean? Uh, and I thought, you know, because other DJs were slighted. You know, it was DJ sitting around and way before me, but they wasn't getting no action. Mm. And you know, I was at Shea Ruin and I met a couple of DJs sitting on standing around and I'm like, hey, when I got through playing, or before I played, they introduced themselves to me and that's how I met so and so and that's how I met this other DJ, you know what I mean? And I said, Hey, how's it going? You he said, Yeah, I play. I said, You ever played here? Cause that I was new to Shea Ruin. Some people had told me about Shea Ru and uh, I decided to go in there and I met Brown and DeWitt. And Jewel and uh, Trainer Cole, you know, and Bowling Brook Connection, they whole group was there, you know what I mean? It was a big set. It was a real, but when I, what I'm trying to get at is that I kind of felt, because uh, um, I never treated anybody differently, you know, and I always uh, was kind of humble and it, it was it's just my nature. It wasn't nothing like I was trying to put on the front for people. I was just trying to get to know everybody, you know what I'm saying, and trying to blend, I put it like that. And uh, you know, it's just a real competitive now. Back in the day, it wasn't a competitive type of thing. We just played our box. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And, and, and try to make people enjoy the party. That's what we was about. That's how I was about. That's all I, you know, it wasn't trying to be, I didn't know that my success as a step of DJ was, was you know, kind of tripping out on certain people that's been out for a while. I didn't mean to do nothing. You know what I mean? I ain't did nothing. I stayed neutral the whole time. But, you know what I mean, some people got a little shade there, you know what I mean? Why y'all always picking him? You know, it was that type of situation. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So, right now, it did now. I kind of turned off on the sets now. Especially the out of town. So, a lot of them I just got rid of, believe it or not. It's people mm. dying for some of them sets. Y'all could have them all. Mm. I'd rather stay right here now. Cause I mm. like the mainstream sets. I like the real parties. I don't like the real, the the, the up and down and the, the grasshoppers jumping all in my face all night. I don't like that no more. Mm-hmm. And I used to take it, you know what I mean? Cause I was on all these different pluggers and you know what I mean? But it ain't me no more. So y'all had a downfall. I mean, a, da- a way of easing out of it and losing your, you know, uh, you losing the, you know, the, the what I'm trying to say is losing trying to go out here and please the people. You know, I ain't trying to please them like that no more. Mm. You see what I'm saying? I wanted to stay how I was and I wanted to play the music how I felt it should be played. You know mm. what I mean? I got tired of playing <clears throat> all that fast stuff, all the remixes. Can I play anything yeah. real? You can play it out of town. So oh, I'm okay. out of town. Okay. So well, you know, what I um, like to do now, like I said, good times is one of the main sets that I really like to play. Yeah. Because I can play yeah. the way I want to play. Yeah. You can't do that yeah. with all these other parties. Just yeah. stand around and look mm-hmm. at you, you're bound with an empty floor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When are you going to pick it up? Man, you going to pick yeah. this party up or what? Man, wow. You can't relate when I'm playing. Because you oh. not, you wasn't there then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying wow. to get at. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right now. And yeah. I kind of lost it for. The out of towners yeah. and you know yeah. some of the yeah. sets because I teach everybody that count that one two three, four mm-hmm. five, six seven eight everybody teaching that yeah and they can't smooth that into the music the real yeah. music they can't do That's that right. if they got no count to it they can't get with it it's just how it is oh okay so, well you know I mean, um my, yeah. well you know um kind of lost uh, it, but... I believe that uh, um, Reggie and I we could play today's music the uh up tempo stuff if if we really wanted to but uh, i mean however i know that reggie and i 
we've always just simply played music that we loved. You know, it just so happens that the people like the music that we loved, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Until yeah, you, you know, get that crowd that don't know right. the music. And yeah, the, oh, the new yeah. people, oh, like oh, if you yeah, go somewhere good. like Virginia, if you go somewhere like Virginia, you know, if mm -hmm. people from Chicago don't move there and start that music and you put some of that old stuff on, if it's not oh, yeah. something that they hear on the radio, they ain't gonna want to dance to it. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. No, right, right. Yeah, you know, right, uh, um 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 uh what's his name? Uh, Jesus. Um man, where is my memory? Uh, when when yeah um when when I started playing at Club Alphonse, um, and I was doing Friday nights, and it was a, not I played nothing but Steppers music. <clears throat> um, I could not play the same Steppers music that I was playing at Chic Ricks. Mm -hmm. I could I could not do it because I knew yeah. that. They had not heard those songs before. Right. They wanted, they wanted to hear the new stuff, but not necessarily up tempo. They just wanted to hear new stuff, you know. Right, right. right. You know, so yeah, um, so, yeah. I understand yeah, so yeah. So um, so I understand where you're coming from, Mayor, uh, uh, about going going out of town or, or going from this set to uh, uh that set be because unfortunately now all music doesn't work for all sets well back then when uh, reggie go. and i was doing it all the music worked for all the sets you know <laughs> the, the yeah. one thing the one thing that 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 about the the out of town culture and this is not to say anything <clears throat> against the out of town culture mm -hmm. but what's happening is is that many of the djs from chicago that go out of town, mm -hmm. they don't know how to come back in Chicago and play in town. <laughs> you know, they play out of town in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And and it's like, it's like put took took things out of balance. If you go out of if you Lottie Dottie, you're supposed to do what you got to do for everybody. Yeah. If you have to go like to like to uh like Melo said to Virginia and you doing the stuff, you play for Virginia style. Yeah, right. But when you come back home, you don't play Virginia style in Chicago. <laughs> you, yeah, know, yeah. you know, because we're yeah. going to walk. <laughs> you, know, if, mm -hmm. you know, if, if we're going to walk. But the, some of the cats that be they out so much across the country that they've forgotten what the roots are of mm -hmm. the Chicago style when they mm -hmm. play. You know, and uh, listen, I mean, I just, it's like, uh, if a cat is playing, and I, I just give, I just give them forty five minutes now. But you know, the since I've been out the last five years, with the exception of Mellow, and then uh, with the exception of Shorty Smooth, he got down uh, when y'all were in Texas. I didn't have to wait two hours to hit two or three walking songs. Mm -hmm. You know, after 35, 40 minutes, they, it was a drop. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to play 10 of them in a row. All you got to do is play one or two. You could just play one, you know, for in the Chicago style. But I ain't recommending that unless that promoter is from out of town. And they say, I mean, that promoter where you're working at, unless they tell you that's what they want. But when you're in Rome, you do as the Romans do, you know. So I, And so as for me, I could never play. Well, only... Play, only set I could play out of town is is the two sets that I'm doing because the promoters will allow me to be me because I, I ain't trying to change. I tried to change, you know, when I first did my first set, when I came out after my wife passed in and, and uh, trying to please everybody was my downfall. Just play your music. Good music is good music. Just play, just play your music. If they're going to dance, they're going to dance. And then I, I just have you just have to think a little. For me, I just have to think a little more. There are some new cuts now that that I really like, and I've never heard on the set. Like uh, I like that song, uh, my Earth song called "Collide." I would love to walk off of that song, but I ain't never heard nobody play that song. 
you know. I ain't never heard nobody play that that commercial music on the set. I hear an abundance of remixes and yeah. people being creative with the stuff. Now I, I'm cool with that too, but well, man. well, well um, as 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 far as the remixes go, all of that is Mellow Chris' fault. No. <laughs> 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 because, because, Chris, you know, I've always said this. I've I've always said nobody can touch him when it comes to these remixes. Nobody can touch him when it comes to these remixes. Now, um, I used to uh, mix the uh, songs, you know, but uh, uh, my 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 songs be mixing one song into the other, you know, uh, right. you know. And uh, uh, let the other song play while the other is uh, playing too in there, but uh, you but but you took it to a whole different level. You took it a whole different Off level. The chain. That, man, that um, that uh, song that you do with uh, I forgot the lady name, but uh, it's a song that you mix in. Uh, you uh, you mix um, uh, R. Kelly song with with it. Um, I cannot think of the name of the song, and uh, plus, and uh, uh, plus, you mix in the James, James, that the a part of James Brown song. To my, uh, this is bad here. Uh, 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 this ain't never been done on, on a record before. <laughs> I forgot the name of the song, but uh, y'all keep talking. I'm gonna find it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so and like I said, when I when I heard this here, so when I heard that, you know, I was like, "Oh, this is, this is going on out here." And then I heard that Mello had did some with this this cut by Portrait. He had put a remix on that, yeah. and then I had started seeing all these remixes. I mean, but those those though they they still. Mellow seemed to still have the integrity of what the Chicago style was, just like you, Dre. Uh, when you came out and you came from you came from the dance music side, yeah. but when you came into the dance, and both of you guys, when y'all came from the dance music side doing what y'all doing, y'all kept the integrity of what the Chicago style was all about. Y'all mm -hmm. kept it. You know, both of y'all played walking music and you mixed it up. But like today, that that's just not gonna happen no more. They they want to do the hip hop, <laughs> you know. They want to they want to do everything. When ninety nine percent of all, and this came from this came from Sam Chapman, uh, and he said that ninety nine percent ninety nine point nine percent of all stepping music is about love and relationships. Yeah, and you know, so I don't know about yeah, yeah. I don't know about why how how beat hitting beating up somebody upside the head, <laughs> you know, just cause it got a beat or something, <laughs> or, or or you know, doing some other type of crazy stuff is gonna be in the same realm of love and relationships. But people like to dance to the music they like to dance yeah. to, and and I'm cool with that too. Yeah. I'm figuring the happy medium is we just got to put some more walking music. We got to put some more walking with it. You know, we can't keep it straight all uh, one tempo. It's got to be some walking music. Oh, you know, one, of the, uh, one of the older guys, now I, I, I'll let you have it. One of, these, one of the elders told me, say the biggest problem that came in the dance was the instruction. Because what happened was the instructors got in between what the game was really about. See, because as a dancer, when I came on set, I wanted to, or or I, I, I was happy to get mentored by Calvin Bonds or talked to by Lonnie Clark or, you know, or having Lester Gibbs in my ear. Some of the older guys telling me, what the game was, I was, man, I, oh, wow, I was, that was cool seeing a Bishop one and seeing Charlie Green and all this stuff, but that don't happen no more because the instructors now are telling the new dancers what it's all about, and they tell them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
hey, one, two, three. That's what they're telling them. And because, see, you got people out here that don't want to know about the rich culture and all this stuff about the dance. But if they knew that and there was still a rite of passage, like the rite of passage that we've all shared with each other, it would be better. You know, Mello, Mello had to adapt you know to keep his income to keep and, and that's cool we have all had to adapt and now we all at the point now where we just well we want to play what we want to play the way we know how to play it <laughs> you know? right true true because uh uh the uh last time i played was about three four months ago i was a guest dj at um at uh leo's uh, uh on a thursday at um Tommy Tommy Williams said uh, he gives a set there every Thursday. Yeah, uh, so he asked me what I what I guess DJ and I said yeah, and I told him you don't even, you don't even have to pay me. I'm I'm just do it just because I want to do it. So I did it and and I was done with it. Okay, I'm out. Next next job, go ahead. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm out. But um, on another note, I remember the uh, song, Chris. It was uh, by April Hill, "The Search." Can't hear you. Can you hear him, Reggie? Uh-uh, I can't. I ain't got him either. We can't hear you. Can't hear you. I don't know what you Can mean. you hear me, Mello? Yeah. Yeah. We can't. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Okie dokie. Oh, I, I text him. Um, I, I think he's trying to fix. I don't know. He's trying. To fix yeah, yeah, he trying. But uh, that's how it is. Yeah. So it's April Hill. Yeah, April Hill. The search, but uh, it's a remix that uh, he did. That was just uh, phenomenal. Yeah, but he, he had done a lot of re of remixes. But um, but um, let me also say this is is that <clears throat> us us three we represent a progression of steppers djs you were out there and then i came behind you which um i played different as a matter of fact i played a bit more up tempo than you did and then chris came behind me and uh, he just took it to a whole nother level with the remixes and stuff we can hear you. Chris, I believe we can't hear you. I think he can hear us. If you can hear us, Mellow, oh yeah, raise your raise right, your yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. so he's gonna have to go well, out and yeah. come back in. Yeah, yeah, be uh because because his microphone says it's mute. But anyway. Oh yeah. okay, yeah, hold on. So I I think I could deal with that. I think I could deal with that. Uh, his microphone is still oh, there now it's off mute. Now let's see. Okay. Uh, I can hear some noise. Oh, his microphone is back on mute. All right, let me. Okay, oh, yeah, he 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 got to turn your mute, you got to turn your mute off, uh, Melo. Yeah, let's see. Okay, now so say something. Okay, now he good. Mellow. Now nah, we can't hear him. Yeah, let's, let's move it. Anyway. <laughs> Valerie Valerie said we need a reunion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. We need a reunion. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you that gotta was, go out and come yeah. back in. Well, that would be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that would be very interesting. I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll go first. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know what? Uh, um it's it's um it's it's funny how you and I we think a like when it comes to this music be, be because when um you first talked to me about doing this mellow um yeah 
There, okay. there we go. You hear me. The, okay. Uh, because when you first talked to me about doing doing this uh, the other day, I was driving and I was thinking, huh? I'm, okay. If us three got got together and threw a set, and I was thinking, let me see, Reggie, Reggie would go first, I would go second, and Melo Chris would clean up the rear. And it's funny how you just said that you would go first. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you, you know, no, 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 no. <laughs> that would be nice. We'll right. we'll put it out there and see, yeah. if, see if somebody. All right, all right. we'll talk about it a little. We'll talk yeah, about it. we'll we'll, we'll talk okay. about it. That would be nice, right? Yeah, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> but some of them real good ones out there. The people that you know slowed down from coming out. Maybe we could do. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Wait, look at Valerie. Valerie just pumping it up. Hey, hey, talk about that would be nice. to say. Hey, 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 just play that every set you just get you know you get burned up and people are getting burned up at them yeah you know if we could reach back a little further and 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 play some stuff you know what I mean? I, I mean, if, yeah. you know <laughs> but you know <laughs> it's just rough man yeah, I well, love to reach back and play some stuff that ain't being played all the time man oh, okay. so, just yeah. like you don't want to hit me and mrs jones there's a ton of them like that man oh god <laughs> you know and, and so i only go out <laughs> So I only go out like uh you know on Wednesday night you know now every okay. now and then I go to some other places but well I go out on a regular Wednesday and every time every time when when the DJ play that I try to, and I don't started dancing I try to get off the floor some like nah, nah some lady gonna come ask me to dance and I hate to tell them no what song is that Man, this that remix of me and Mrs Jones have you heard it no I haven't heard it but I don't oh, understand. You heard it? Oh, no, no. Melo, no. you, Melo, you gonna have to send it to him, you know, cause yeah, I, just, I cannot stand that. that. They took, transfer. they I'll took it. it they took Billy. Yeah. They took Billy Paul's version and cut it up. Really? Yeah, they and they man. cut it up on the on the violin part, and then they put a then they put a disco beat. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. man, and this up tempo all oh, and and then one cat messed up Shirley Scott called it I'm the man. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he did a, one cat did a remix on that, and this it's a yeah. lot of them that you know, and then some cat did the one well, that with record that. took off. That was Marky G. Marky yeah, G. Yeah, yeah. Real good boy. Man, I, boys with that mix. But you know yeah. what's most of the out of towners and the new school that they ate that song up. Yeah, oh, they love nice. that. Um, okay. yeah. They love that, but I wouldn't dance off of that. And then they even no. tried to do that with life in the country. Oh, really? And, yeah, man. I couldn't dance. I, I, That's I, one I didn't like. I didn't like that mix when I heard it. First time I yeah. heard it. No, I didn't care for that one. Mm. Wow, it's already a long song. <laughs> yeah. It's already a long song. Yeah. And then they, and then they one of the things that you do, and some of the things that I like. Uh, uh, some of the things is when they, when they put that regular, when they reg put that regular rhythm track on there, mm. uh, that them them drum beats, yeah. and they did that with uh, they did that with Anita Baker sometimes, and then they got this 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 smiling faces sometimes by mm. uh. Uh, by David Ruff and his version oh, of it, they oh, would okay. put that, put that, man, and they was playing that so much that as soon as I heard that come on, I would go to the men's room. I didn't want to hear that, man. And they, about and smiling faces, yeah, yeah, Woo. yeah. That's another one that took off pretty good. And yeah, that one the took off. Of it, the rhythm of it uh, did it, and people didn't really know it was David Ruff right away. No, no, they didn't know. It. Nope. You know, so it came out to be like a new track, a new song. Wow, okay. And then somebody found out, hey, that's David Ruffin, old version of Smiling Face. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and we found out, you know what I mean? But I didn't even realize what it was at first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And man, they put the beat, they put the beat on uh on Stone Soul Picnic. <laughs> and then when they did the remix and put the beat on uh trying to make a fool out of me. Mm. Oh man, I say, oh God. And then and then this was uh this was this other DJ who did uh Darling, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it's, it's maybe it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh man, yeah. 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 So that's all it does. It's, it's, it's a repetitious mix because that's all it did was that back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for five minutes. Or oh, well, you know, it's to me, I don't like repetitions like that. You know what I mean? Mm. I got to hear the yeah. verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The faces and the Delphonics mix he was talking about those. Ran a little bit better, even the one with moving on by a spectrum. Yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah. But at least it went through the song and it wasn't mm. just darling, maybe, maybe. So, you know, that's the ones I don't like when they're real repetitious like that and they just sit in that one mode for five minutes. I, mean, oh, I, can't, wait, yeah. I can't wait to take that off. So, what I do is I don't play them. Right. So, <laughs> so I was uh, yeah. I was doing spinning the set with Leanna, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> I happened to play that trying to make a fool out of out of you, you know what I'm saying? In mm -hmm. in the fifty when she had her set going on. And you know how Leanna is. She came up and she came up in the booth and she put both her hands on her hips and she looked at me and she said, I didn't bring you in here for that. <laughs> now, which one was it? What version was it? Uh trying to make uh, do -do 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 where they did they didn't do they put that constant track on there, but they, they kept looping that uh uh and you keep they kept looping that part of them. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Oh, trying to make a fool out of me. Right, and right, they, right, 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 right. they did well, that. You know what? After so much of that, and people done heard these remixes for so long, the older people are just not interested. They want to yeah. hear the original. You yeah. Know? I think that's what it is. Everybody want to hear the original. Yeah. yeah. These songs now, to me, the originals are more of a turn on <clears> than uh, all in a remix stuff. Yeah. You know, you can play one or two of them because you got, like I said, when you got a mixed yeah. crowd, like I'm going to have in, in two weeks, it's a mixed crowd. So I might have to throw yeah. one or two of those in there. So don't doubt I mean, it, but that's good. I mean, that is good. That is really good because right. that's mm -hmm. always been what the culture of the stepping set for us has always been. You know, Kenny B, when he was doing, when he was spinning with Alvia at the Royal House, Kenny B would take a B-side, a dub version of a song, and he would play it, man, and he, he would drive that rhythm on that. Uh, one of the songs that come to mind in the mid-'80s was the Gap Band's I Found My Baby. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, he, yeah, would, yeah. he would play that dub version on that song. Boom, boom, pop. He would play that man, and then sometimes he might, he might start it over, you know, with another when he, when we had the doubles and we were starting the music over. But he, mm -hmm. he did that, and that was like our equivalent to what the remixes are, you know, today. But we just played the dub version, and even that uh uh dub version of a uh, soul to soul, uh, keep on moving, yeah. Okay. You know, that was that was like uh, that was like our creative stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But the only thing that I would do uh, uh, was like I would blend the fronts of a song, <laughs> right? You know that 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 Charde, I couldn't love you more. Do -do 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 -do. I would play that for about thirty sec, forty seconds. I'd keep you know running it back. Right, and right. uh play, playing it like equivalent to a loop today, you know. Right, right. Man. You know, and I was doing that with the twelves, you know. Yeah. And the same thing with that whole tight by loose ends. Oh yeah, I, that was a beat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I was, yeah. yeah, I was blending first on that, and then Scope yeah. came up in behind me and he, he started ripping that stuff off. I say, Oh, look at this boy. <laughs> and then next year, and then I didn't get a chance to hear Mellow, but that's all I was hearing. Man, did you hear what Mellow Chris did? Did you hear what he did? Did you hear how he was doing? Uh, uh, oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah, so you know, this this is like if if 
if cats wanted to get an education on being a DJ, you got three of the best here. <laughs> yeah. Man, I um, and I was blessed to even get get to to really put my music out there and got the appreciation. Some people appreciate it real good, so mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I played at a lot of sets in Chicago before yeah. I started going out of town. I enjoyed the sets here in Chicago. Now I see, I thought the out of town, and you know, maybe it was the atmosphere of being out of town and the cities I was going to that I some of them I've never been to. So when I was flying to these cities, maybe that kind of did something. So when somebody asked me, man, would you come to LA or would you come to uh, to Vegas or Phoenix? You know, I kind of jumped to it. You know what I mean? But eh, I'm burnt out now. I, you know, I think I had enough of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So well, I'm we have, laid we're... back now because I, I done turned 65. <laughs> so I'm going to lay back. So, yeah, we all, we all, uh, we all, we all, we all that, we all there, mm. you know. Uh, Wait a minute! I'm not 65 yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm knocking on the door because I'm 63. <laughs> yeah, and I'm and I'm 68. You know? <laughs> yeah, so so that's been some good. It's been some good things, and so if anybody wanted to know about the about the DJing game, you you got it. DJing one on one here from yeah. three of uh, from three of the best. You know, you know, it was so many people before I met you guys talked about Scorpio and Reggie Miles. You know that how many times that conversation came up? It might have been Charlie Green, it might have been Luke, I don't know who it was, but I heard that stuff for years. Uh Claudia was not one of them that brought me y'all to my attention. Oh uh, god. Uh, when I got to the, uh, tried to find out that uh, Steve wasn't around. Did he see, did y'all meet Steve when y'all was doing at Chick Rex? No. No. I, no. I, I, no. See, Steve came around, me, Steve, and Vincent came around 92, <clears throat> 93. Yeah. That's what, that was our era. We was like the next generation from where y'all were. Mm. And like I said, yeah. who were out here was like William Brown, William Barry. He was out yeah. here. William and, Barry, uh, yeah. Uh, Triple Ted, and you know what I mean? Yeah. So, was a, you know, and in the clubs, it was like Herb Ken, Bill Humphrey, remember that? Yeah. yeah. Ron, Ron yeah. Stevens. Yes. Ron yes. Ron Brown was over at the 50-yard line doing the brunch. Mm-hmm. You know, it was it was, it was kind of like that. That's the kind of flavor I walked in on. You know what yeah. I mean? Okay. And uh, Willie Cox, I don't think he, yeah, Willie Cox, I think he was in and out. He was doing a lot of Mirage, like I said. He was yeah. doing a lot of Mirage. He was doing four plus four and a couple of more. Yeah. Right, that was another place that that I used to play at La Mirage. Oh yeah, you played over there. Yeah. Yep, the uh, cause I came after him, mm. after Willie Cox at La Mirage. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Yep. Was Sandra and them? Was Sandra and them set? It was the same set. Uh, you know what? Another... You know what? I don't remember who set it was. You, you know what? Back then, I, I must be honest. I was so into the music that uh, whoever hired me, I would do it. But I could not tell you their, their names, the name of the group or nothing. I couldn't remember. Look at Valerie came, put out there. You came with Arlene. I don't even know who that, I don't remember. You remember her. Arlene? Arlene Jones? Mm, that uh, was the one Arlene, she was that. That's who Valerie Wait a minute. Was that Go ahead, go ahead, Reggie. Was and, and that's the Arlene with Deja Vu. I'm thinking that's who she's talking about. I'm not yeah, and that the one Val, but you know she went to church with us, uh, Andre. Oh, she did. Yeah, she was in, and, and, and Breeze uh, and Breeze was in church too. Yeah, right. There's some I didn't, and I didn't know Breeze was in church until I, till I started li- till I started being in DC. That both he and Arlene was was you know in, in apostolic. I do remember the name, but I can't remember the face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's who Valerie said. Yeah, that's who it is. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Mella, so Mella yeah. on the on the uh on the tip to, that's out here today. Who who do, who do who do you see as one of the one of the persons that can take the torch into the next uh 
Man, I hate to put it on that kind of spot. Oh, my God. All right, well, don't answer it then. <laughs> <Don't> answer <laughs> it. Not a problem. Not a problem. <laughs> I think everybody out here is kind of in the same mode. I don't see nobody reaching out uh -huh. and grabbing that attention uh -huh. like that no more. Uh -huh. I, you know what I mean? Who you uh -huh. know that's standing out here? You know, uh -huh. that stands out that people are not sick of. Mm. Who can you say? You know what I mean? I think everything is like in moderate. I think every everything is moderate right now. I don't think mm. nobody's standing out. Mm. You know, uh, Sam Chapman stopped playing. Uh, Vail plays a lot. DJ Vail mm -hmm. plays a lot. Maybe he he's got a lot of parties. Um, I don't want but a couple. I'm done. You know what I'm saying? If I could do Cheryl, Deja Vu, and maybe one more, I'm done. You know what mm. I mean? I've, I've got calls to uh, uh, certain sets to come back and they ask me would I come and it might be a possibility as long as they real and original school I mean you know old time it, it's nothing new I don't mm. want to do nothing new mm. when it comes, yeah I don't want to do nothing new if it's around people like you guys and people of our age and our culture then okay mm. I could be game to come back and play the music is not the same uh -huh. uh, yeah yeah the music is not the same now yeah no. You're right, the music is not the same. Yeah. Mm. And, and everybody playing the same 15, 20 records everywhere you go. That's mm. why I try and go back. I try and play something different. Last time you heard uh, 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 not the T Connection uh, slipping away. Oh, no, you ain't right? heard that. You well, ain't heard that. Ain't been out there. Before. I ain't even heard knock knock. Mm -hmm. I ain't even heard nobody play knock knock. <laughs> no, 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 you know, uh uh. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. The Valentine Brothers. Shoot. Uh-uh. Valentine Brothers. Who? The Valentine Brothers. Yeah, which Valentine one? Brothers. Uh, which uh, one? The Lonely... Uh, lonely Nights? Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Lonely absolutely. No, you, you won't hear none of that. Mm -mm. No. no, you won't hear none of that. No, I, little Anthony, you don't hear that music. No, oh, oh no. Help me find a way. I haven't... You hear that? Yeah, yeah. La la la. When have you heard la la la? Yes. Please. Mm -hmm. At the end. <laughs> look at her. Look at her. Yeah. Man, I ain't, I ain't heard no Denise yeah. Williams. I ain't heard free at all. No, no, yeah. We yeah. used to play it a little bit. Yeah, we used to play it a little bit. Yeah. Even though it was commercial, it still was pretty. It was a good song to play. Yeah, you can play it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good song. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well um, you know, um, I think that the that the um, steppers, they as as time goes on, they get older, and, mm. and they'll then, have to come back to it. Go ahead, right? And uh, then and then these uh, then these young people they come, so uh, they want to hear not the what quote unquote the old music. They want to hear some new stuff, but it'll all come back around. It will come back around because they have to get older too. Absolutely, you know they have to to get older too. Yeah, man. And, 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 by, the and, and, they, by the time they get old and, and slow down, shoot, I'll be way out the game. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I will. I will probably be not out the game, but I'll be out of this world. Then you know, you know, you and, me, you know. Uh, and definitely me. <laughs> What's yeah, what yeah, software yeah. What, what software uh program do you use, Andre and uh Mellow? I don't I don't use any software. Well they're asking you that I think, Reggie. Hey Reggie, okay. what software DJ program do you, you use? Do you say do y'all use? You're right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, uh, no, no, um, no, I don't they talking about a oh, DJ software hey, well, like virtual and, and oh no. Uh, it said, "Do of uh, y'all you? Uh, they are to my all three of us, but uh, right. I don't use any. Um, how, um, however, the, from my understanding, the number one is Serato. Right. You know, you know uh, uh, that's number one, and then you um, got the other one, um, virtual DJ. Right. And I got them both. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and so do I, but uh, I don't use them. You know." When the last yeah. one did you use then, Scorpio, before you got to stand alone? Which was the last one you used? The, uh, the, the last one I used was Serato. Yeah, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. See, I'm a virtual guy. And I yeah. use virtual uh, because... Uh, 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 uh -huh. after, after, after I got rid of DJ Power, I got virtual 
DJ because that's what I had um, down there at um, at God. No, why I keep uh, Alfonso? Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I always use was virtual DJ. Uh, um, I really didn't uh, give um, Serato a shot until I don't know, probably about three years ago. Yeah. But um, I still like virtual DJ. I like virtual DJ. Yeah. 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 You know, I think a lot of the house jocks use Serato. Right. Oh, oh yeah. You had the big, you had the big lines there. And you could, as long as you match those, even without headphones, you on beat. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like yeah. A lot of people, I've seen a lot of DJs put them two together. Oh as yeah. As long as they can maintain those two lines together in the middle of that screen, yeah. then that right. track was on beat. And yeah, a lot of times you can control the way that that the music sound because uh, uh you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right, right. So with Toronto, how... with virtual, I didn't need that because I had to mix them for years. So mm -hmm. I didn't need that. I just needed a good headset. Right, and I can let it sit there. I can make it do what I wanted to do. Oh yeah, because I had been doing it for so many years, like with oh, yeah. vinyl. You know, with vinyl, you could take your uh -huh. thing. And we used to twirl around. Yeah, And twirl it a little bit this way. Yeah. If it's, it's not fast, if it's too fast, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we was able to do that with vinyl. Uh -huh. and that, that's what people do with these these software. Right? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. You know, uh, you know uh, um, I have I have heard other DJs say uh, that um, if uh, you are DJing with this new stuff, and if you're using the uh, sync button, you're not a real DJ. You know, I've heard DJs say that. Well, I disagree with that because, like I said earlier, I'm okay with technology. That's that's what technology is about. Right. You know, right. use it. You know, use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that too. But you know, uh, I know how the real game was and uh, how it goes, and I used it. Uh, we had the pitch controls on the turntable, then we did that. Yeah. I, I, I ain't got to struggle with that, or I ain't right. got to go find that pitch now. Right. And I can automatically get that out the way. You know right. what I'm saying? So yep. why I'm going to struggle through that? I right. think they're still trying to act like they're pitch control happy. You know yeah. what I mean? And right. they just got to maintain that beat with that pitch control. But it ain't that serious to me right now. Right, you know no. What I'm I did yeah. that growing up. Yeah. We the turntables. Who didn't do that when they as DJs? We right. did that growing up. So yeah. they can keep that, that part of it. You know, well, I, mean, no, I can take the easy way out. I don't care what you say. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. well, it's, it, it was easy for me because I came from radio, right? Yeah. And so so we always applied the James Brown theory. <laughs> you know, you just drop it on the one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever you play, as long as you drop it on the one, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit. Yeah. And so, you know, but we call that a segue in radio. And so I just segued it all the time. Just a long picket on that last note, as long as I count that one and hit that one, when the next song come in right. up full, you didn't know the difference. Yeah. It, it just hit. People, it right. just That's hit how good. you maintain your flow and you keep your dancers on the flow. Yeah. yeah. And that's the one thing. That's the one thing that they missing when they playing that walk record because they can't hit it on the one. Because if I'm still walking and when that one song is getting ready to go off, yeah. that next song needs to hit dead on that one so I can still yeah. hold that girl in my arms yeah. and not let her go. Yeah. But that's that's what the cats are not. They missing that now. Yeah, you know, they missing that. Man, please. We, you know, they missing that. Just like you say, they don't know how to do that. Yeah, yeah. They, they missing that. Uh -huh. but they not from there. They ain't been doing it long. A lot of them claim they've been dead dead for a long time, but they haven't. You know what I mean? I've old timers, you know what I mean? That it don't have sense enough to know how to do that. You know what I'm saying? How long you been spending, Andre? Uh, over 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 35 years. Over 35 years. Mellow? Yeah. Mellow? Oh my god. Since 74 is when I first put two turntables together and really played. <clears throat> uh I was a sophomore in high school. <laughs> Okay. That's what? That's about forty. That's about yeah. That's about forty-nine years. Yeah, yeah, Reggie, Reggie, Miles. Yeah, it was a long time. Yeah, it was a long time. Yeah, 
Miles. 50. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Miles. 51 years. We got we got over we got over 130 years of combined experience right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 130 and all of us we took each other to another level. Yeah. Took the game to another level. You can't beat this here. No. <laughs> you can't no. beat this here. Mm -hmm. I never had I never had any competition comp was never competing with Andre. You know, I never competed with Ernest L. I never competed with Kenny B, all of, of the people that I was teamed up with. But you know, I you know, I love Ernest, I love Kenny, but you know, I had the I had the uh the chemistry with Andre. <laughs> we just we just rolled, yeah. you know. Yeah, we yeah, out. Out. you know it's hard to play with a DJ and some kind of way you go out and stand out a little stronger doing a set. You can come behind somebody and start, man, where you been all night? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, yeah. You know, yeah, and, and, and then it, it be that it, it be that little pettiness. But it, you doing you though, right? Right. right. It, and it's that little pettiness that you know when somebody try to make it personal, but right. that's it the whole personal. idea of the set. Right. You supposed to never done personal, but people take that and 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 you know what I mean, and and they'll run with that. Yeah, well, you know, we all we all came, you know, at the peak of the mountain, everybody can't stand on it at the same time. <laughs> you know, you can't do that. So, you know, I don't mind looking up to see who up there. Right, you know, because right. it's only it's only it's only one place you can go when you can get to the when you get to the peak, and that's down. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I want to keep I want to keep on that journey upward. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I definitely want to keep on that journey up with yeah. it. So that's that's a good yeah. thing. I uh no um uh when I was out there, I I never would go to any of the other sets and um and uh, tell them, hey, why don't you let me DJ y'all set? I would I would do it for uh, X amount of money and blah blah blah. You know, I never I never did that. You know, uh, um. Um, because I was happy just playing the music at whoever wanted to listen to it and whoever wanted to pay me and stuff, you know. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but um, it did come to a point for me to, to, whereas I, to whereas I would refuse to, um, to pay for, play for little or nothing, you know. And I'm mm. like, nah. No, not no. I'm not. I'm no. Get some. Get somebody else to do it. You know. No, I'm not. I'm not doing it. Yeah. Well, well your time and your you, you got all that history and uh, you have all that experience and uh, your time is worth more money than what these guys are getting now. You know they uh, undercut a lot of DJs out here. I heard DJs come out here and say, "Man, you ain't even got to pay me." I heard wow. DJs say, "Man, I'll give me fifty dollars. Just give me fifty dollars." Oh, heard uh -uh. everything. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just to, I, 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 to be heard, you know what I mean? Uh, they just want to get in the game. Man, and, it, and and then I would hear those stories right after I would start leaving out the cats when they was, like, going under the table, right? You know, I didn't have to worry about that with Andre, but, you know, other cats, man, all you got to do is give me gas money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. All you got to do is give me gas money, or or when they would get to the thing, they say, "Well, yeah, oh, uh, we." Get, and, and the promoters was really ruthless, right? They would say, "Oh, yeah, man, you know, we got to pay for Reggie, and then we got to pay for his sound system." But then this other dude say he gonna bring the sound system in, and he gonna play the music, and well, Reggie want three fifty. All he gonna do it for he gonna do it for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> and we so I was out, <laughs> you know, and, and then and then the word get out in the community, right? Oh, Reggie Miles, he want too much. <laughs> you know, he Reggie Miles, he want too much. He costs too much and all that stuff. And so, you know, it was brutal. You know, you know. He offer me something that's gonna be worth my while. You know what yeah, I mean? you know, don't don't give me that. And most of the DJ feel the same way. DJ Calvin. Uh, Darren, you know, we, you know, uh, these, uh, they, these guys that's been in and out, 
Uh, Calvin's still at the 50 yard line now. 21 yeah. years, oh. and he's going he's gonna to be one of my guests. 21 years. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. He did. Darren got a lot of history, too. He, I met him at Sheru, uh, and we used to hang at Mr. Lee's and, uh, where else? Uh, the Rose. Uh-huh. I used to hang at the Rose a lot, you know what I mean? And uh, I think I saw, used to see Darren and them back in the day, back up in there. Uh, uh uh, when uh, what's her name? Shoots, Mary Shorter used to throw sets. You mm. remember Mary Shorter? You remember, you remember Mary Shorter? You used to throw Thursdays at the Rose. Thursday mm. nights. It was a big set on the wow. west side of Madison, right off of Madison's and Central. It was a, yeah, and that was a big set. And uh, a lot of us used to pile up in there on uh, on the. We remember to get the car and go to the west side just to go mm -hmm. to that set on Thursday nights. Man, two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> Two All minutes. Right. Close right. out. Close out. Easy. Two minutes, Andre. Close out with what you want to close us out with. Then, mellow. Two minutes. Close out, and then I might just say something. Um, this has really been fun. Really enjoyable. There is nothing better um, to me than um, talking music with DJs, especially DJs that I respect. You know, and and uh, like I stated, we have, we have, we have, uh, we all had our place, and Mellow Chris still has his place, and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but but um, we we have all taken it to a different level, you know, to mm -hmm. a, a different level, which is which is very enjoyable, and I'm happy that the music is still living on now it might not be the way that we are used to hearing it but it's still there you know mm -hmm. it's it's still there and and the music will just go around and around in circle it might be up tempo now but as time goes on it okay. will come down it will, come down. it will it would be it would be back you know yeah, so that's that's really all I have to say. Long live Steppers music. Yeah, man. My thing is that I enjoyed the years that I had and uh, the people I met. I met a lot of good people on the set uh, and uh, a lot of people I'm still friends with today. And we lost a lot of people like Otto Marks. We lost Otto. We lost Butterball. We lost Big Luke. Uh, we lost Charlie Green, Steve Breeze. It's a lot of people we lost. We didn't say anything about Dr. Feelgood, my man. Mm. He played more mm. good dust than anybody mm. out here that mm. out here on a regular. You know, a lot of people you uh, go to Doc, uh, Dr. Feelgood said he used to drop some oldies on you real good. Oh, <laughs> yes, uh, you go walk, man. You know that. Hey. Yeah, Feelgood these heartaches. Go ahead. He's not playing now. I don't know what happened to Feelgood. He's not playing. I gotta look up Feelgood and find out next time he's playing. But man, feel good with the man. He was another good guy out here. You know what I mean? Uh, um, Jimmy Lee and uh, Gerald Jones <clears throat> held down uh, Good Time Productions before me and Steve and them got there. You know what I mean? They started doing guest DJs, and I think that's when I came about. You know what I mean? Woody McNeil. I remember when she was out here playing a box. Bill Humphrey. You know what I mean? I just met a lot of good people out here, and uh, I had a good time out here. Meeting everybody and getting a, in on the man. I had a number of good vibes from a lot of people. I enjoyed mm -hmm. the set the time I was here. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm 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 full of joy. I'm just full of joy. And I, I gotta really... give my man Larry Fulson some plugs too. I got Larry Fulson to help me out at the other place. I couldn't find nobody that would put up with Mayfield. Mayfield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I went and found out about Larry. Somebody came to me and said, man, you check this guy out at 111 named Larry Fulson. And I grabbed him and I went out there and met him, introduced myself to him, and he helped me out at the other place. And I, yeah. I thank him for that today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had to share Macy with somebody. <laughs> yeah, man, I work for him too, so you yeah, know, yeah. crazy. He just had his ways. That's all. Yeah, he get crazy. he get that brown brown liquor, and then he had always yeah. kept the gun on him, you know. So he, yeah. being an ex -po policeman, I'm just I'm full. I'm just I'm just full. I gotta go to work tomorrow. It don't even matter now, cause I've talked to two of the greatest. 
uh, when I left and I came back, people to this day still talk about what me and Andre did. Oh, yeah. And while I was gone, people tell me what Mello Chris has done. Mm -hmm. And I'm just fooled that I know now that this conversation and parts of what we did is now recorded. It's for everybody to go and find out what's happening. Mm -hmm. We might have yeah. to do this again. So mm -hmm. we might have to talk again. I might have to just get y'all and we just do a DJ for them. I don't care because it's time. I I'm going to continue to teach and to continue to share this rich history and culture of what we did, what y'all did. And I appreciate y'all for giving me your time tonight. All right, my man. I enjoy, I enjoy it. Make sure I get those emails, man. I yes, got you sir. Ready. So yes, I sir. I <coughs> so I can send you that music to you and let you okay. check it out. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Peace out, man. I appreciate y'all. All, right. All righty. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Reggie. Yes, sir. Don't forget to uh, thank everybody that tuned in, too. Oh, yeah. Well, you yeah. know, I was going to do that after, okay. after you guys. Oh, after, you know. after we go. All right. Yeah. All right, All right man. <laughs> All right. I love it. Okay. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. I've had a great time, and it has been really wonderful. And I'll take care of that for you, Andre. Uh, it's been wonderful. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for putting up with us talking DJ shop for like, well, we did it a long time. Okay. And so this is there and we'll continue next week. Uh, my guess is going to be, I think it's Jackie Dace. I think my guess next week, but I have been working, trying to get the conversations thing together and I've got it. And so I'm going to tighten it up. I start work tomorrow. So I'm going back to school doing what I need to do. So in the meantime, I hope you all have a great, great evening. And I also want to thank my sponsors, uh, Step A Union, that's happening the Memorial Day weekend, and also Texas Heat, uh, the Carmens, and they'll be doing their set. And y'all keep praying and y'all keep working towards this reunion set for the three DJs that you just seen. Reggie Miles, Andre Scorpio, and Mello Chris. Thank you again for listening. And thank you again for joining me here on Conversation.